You're watching NASA TV. Good morning and welcome to Mission Patrol Houston. I'm NASA Shaniqua Wolverine and we're bringing you live coverage today of the 254th Spacewalk in support of the International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. You're currently looking live as NASA astronauts. For Duke for ComCheck. Go ahead. Hey Duke, we think we've recovered our KU forward link. If you wouldn't mind giving us a comm check on space to ground three and four. Houston station, comm check on space to ground three. Loud and clear on three. Happy the same, switch into four. Houston Station, comm check on space to ground four. I have you loud and clear on four, how me? Have you the same. You're looking live inside the Quest airlock where astronaut Nicole Mann is helping to suit up NASA astronauts Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio, who will be conducting today's spacewalk. The duo are looking to head outside of the hatch later today to assemble and install brackets and struts for a modification kit for upcoming solar array upgrades. The new ISS rollout solar arrays, or IROSAs, will increase the space station's total available power NASA astronaut Josh Cassida, suited up in the suit with the red stripes, will be EV-1 or extravehicular crew member one today. He is on the left of your screen, a little out of focus. And then you'll see Frank Rubio in the unmarked suit today they, as they prep currently for their spacewalk. The crew is currently running about 30 minutes behind schedule, which could mean a later start time than the scheduled 7.05 a.m. Central Time to exit the hatch today. Station Houston on one, stop exercise. The duo are suited up and going through procedures before they head out of the hatch later this morning. They're currently in a process called pre-breathing, and currently the crew is going through some exercises, which consist of two parts to purge nitrogen from their bodies. The first step is in which the crew is breathing 100% oxygen while in their suits, and then the second part of the pre-breathe portion is crew members being in their suits and they are currently completing suit light exercise. Start exercise. You'll hear Capcom Megan Levins talking to the crew, telling them when to complete exercise and when to stop exercising. Again, this is part of the pre-breathe process, which the crew started about 15 minutes ago. 
And again, this is the activity before spacewalks where the crew purges nitrogen from their bodies. We're currently in a brief handover between satellites. You're getting a live view right now inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room. The Orbit One team, currently being led by Vincent Lacourt, flight director, will be handing over to Anthony Varia this morning. And Capcom Megan Levins will be handing over to the Ground IV, who's going to be Heading over to ground IV, Zena Cardman this morning. You currently see this shift handover right now on your screen. Station Houston on one for airlock, stop exercise. Station Houston on one, start exercise. Station Houston on one for Duke, with KU recovered, you're go to execute step six.
be thumbs up. And correction, that's uh, step six. And correction on my part, that's steps six through eight. The uh, steps six through eight. Good copy. If you're just joining us, you're looking live inside the Quest airlock where two astronauts are being suited up to head outside the hatch later this morning. We're bringing you live coverage today of the 254th spacewalk in the support of the International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. NASA astronauts Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio will conduct a spacewalk to install and in assemble and install brackets and struts of a modification kit for upcoming solar array upgrades. The new ISS rollout solar arrays, or IROSAs, will increase the space station's total available power. The crew currently is in a stage called pre-breathe. They are in the second portion of pre-breathe where they are doing in-suit light exercise. You'll hear the Capcom Megan Levins call up to the crew to start and stop the exercise. Again, this is to purge nitrogen from their bodies. As the crew continues to do preparations, you see Nicole Mann, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, suit up lead, and her backer, JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata, helping to set the duo up for their spacewalk this morning. As do continues their preparations of pre-breathe, we can go into an animation to explain a little further what the crew will be doing today. U.S. Spacewalk 81 will be conducted by EV-1, Josh Casada, and EV-2, Frank Rubio. EV-1 exits the airlock and gets handed one of the bags in preparation for the EVA. And the second bag, the strut bag, gets handed out and put on EV-1's body restraint tether. EV-2 egresses the airlock, and that allows EV-1 to start translation up the CETA spur over to phase one of the ISS truss. Josh translates along and stops at a handrail to hook up EV2's safety tether and his safety tether and continues his translation path. As he makes his way down the truss, he translates along and gets out to the end of the S6 truss and tethers the strut bag. Meanwhile, Frank Rubio closes the thermal hatch and makes his way up 
the C to spur, the face one to follow the same translation path that Josh just translated along. He makes his way out to the S4 truss and stows the cable bag and retrieves a pair of cables for the 3A beta gimbal assembly. This is in preparation for the ISS rollout solar array that will be installed in a future EVA. He hooks them up on the mounting bracket, routes one on the right side and tethers it off, and then routes the one on the left side. Frank translates out with that cable bag and temporarily stows it on the S6 truss. Meanwhile, Josh climbs up onto the One Bravo BGA and drives the H fixture bolts. This is in preparation for installing the mod kit assembly. When Josh is finished at the beta gimbal assembly, he leaves and joins Frank on the truss and starts assembling the upper triangle. They take the pieces out of the strut bag and bolt them together into a triangular pattern. Once these pieces are put together, Josh will ingress the articulating portable foot restraint in preparation for attaching the upper triangle to the beta gimbal assembly. Frank hands the triangle up to Josh, and Josh installs it with his pistol grip tool. Once this is in place, Josh will egress the foot restraint and help Frank retrieve several of the other struts as part of the assembly. Frank will get into position and hand one end of the lower strut up to Josh and get into position to drive his bolt. Working together, the two crew members will install the lower strut and bolt it in place. Frank will apply the final torque on the bolt and get into position for the mid strut. Again, working together, the two crew members will install the mid strut and drive the bolts to put it in place. Once this is complete, the two crew members retrieve the struts for the right side of the mod kit. They will repeat the process by installing the lower strut first and driving the bolts to torque it into place. The two crew members will follow that up with the right side mid strut, working together to get it into place and driving all the bolts. Meanwhile, Josh will egress the foot restraint and retrieve the ISS rollout solar rays that will get put in place in preparation for deployment of the ISS rollout solar array when that arrives. This is very similar to what Frank did earlier in the EVA, where he'll take one of the two cables and route it over to the right side and tether it in place. And then he'll do the same to deploy the cable on the left side. Once this is done, the crew members will start collecting their gear and stowing it in the empty bags to bring back to the airlock. Frank collects these bags and puts them on his body restraint tether. He makes his way back to the airlock and stows them inside. Josh retrieves the articulating portable foot restraint, puts it on his body restraint tether, and takes it back to the crew aids and tools translation aid, stows it, and then makes his way back to the airlock to complete the EVA. Frank ingresses the airlock first, followed by Josh. The crew will close the thermal cover and then close the hatch on the inside.
Station Houston on one for Duke. We anticipate 1215, that's 1215 for Medox. 1215 for Medox, thank you. You're looking live inside. Um, EV2, uh, Franks, uh, TCV is now in five. Copy, TCV in five. We're currently in a brief handover period between satellites. You're currently looking inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room. And there we go. We should have those views back inside the Quest airlock for you shortly. Station Houston on one. Stop exercise. If you're just joining us, the duo of Josh Cassida and NASA's Frank Rubio will be conducting a spacewalk later today to assemble and install brackets and struts of a modification kit for upcoming solar array upgrades. The duo are suited up and going through procedures before they head out the hatch later this morning. Also in the hatch, the airlock assisting is NASA astronaut Nicole Mann and JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata, Mann serving as suit up lead. During today's spacewalk, Cassidy and Rubio will focus on the installation of the 1B modification kit, building and installing the upper triangle, left and middle struts, and running the IROSA cables. This will enable the next two EVAs for the U.S where they install the irosis. A modification kit is the support structures needed for the future irosis or the ISS rollout solar arrays. Um, and their upgrades.
and periodically you'll hear the Capcom. That's Megan Levins this morning. Call up to the crew. She'll say either to stop or to start exercise. Again, this is a part of the pre-breathe, which the crew began just over 30 minutes ago. This activity happens before spacewalks where the crew purchase nitrogen from their bodies. Crew is currently working to complete their pre-breathing exercise, which they're currently in the, the suit light exercise or the aisle. This is the second of two portions of pre-breathing. Currently in your view, Jask Josh Cassida over on the left side of your screen. He will be the EV-1 or extra vehicle crew member one today. He's in the suit with the red stripes. Frank Rubio will be EV-2 today. He will be in the unmarked suit. This will be the first space walk for both as this is their first mission to the International Space Station. Again, the view you see here of Cassida and Rubio in the Quest airlock shows them completing their in-suit light exercise protocol. These movements help acclimate the body to the lower pressure of the suit and help astronauts purge the excess nitrogen from their blood slowly to avoid getting the bends or decompression sickness. At nominal pressure, the suit is pressurized to about 4.3 pounds per square inch, or PSI. For a little context, the PSI here on Earth is about 14.7, so that 4.3 PSI in the suit is like what you would experience at an elevation of roughly 30,000 feet. Again, you'll see NASA astronaut Nicole Mann and JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata. Mann is the suit-up lead being backed by Wakata today. Station Houston on one. Stop exercise. Station Houston on one, start exercise.
If you're just joining us, you're looking live inside the Quirce airlock. You're looking at the equipment airlock section where the crew is running through some final procedures before venturing out into the vacuum of space this morning where they will complete the 254th extravehicular activity or spacewalk today in assembly and maintenance and upgrades for the International Space Station. Today, the duo will head out and they will be building building and assemb assembling and installing brackets and struts as a modification kit for upcoming solar array upgrades. The new ISS rollout solar arrays or IROSAs will increase the space station's total available power. Station Houston, start the final exercise round.
Uh, just checking. We still have the heck of Are you still doing the uh, activation? And Duke, with you on one, we were actually just about to call you, let you know you can power off HECA per step eight of the pre-breathe procedure. Additionally, stop exercise. Copy, powering off the HECA. We're gonna do this, we're powering off right now for some troubleshooting, we'll power it back on uh, at a later time. Um, we'll give you words on that later, but with the end of the exercise, you're also go for Medox change out. Okay, Houston, for EV1, we have Medox serial number 005, and for EV2, we have 1033. Copy all those are good numbers, you're good to continue.
If you're just joining us, you're looking live inside the Quest airlock, where NASA astronauts Josh Cassidy and Frank Rubio are finishing up preparations and pre-breathe procedures before heading out the hatch today. The duo will be assembling and installing brackets and struts for a modification kit to for upcoming solar array upgrades. The new ISS rollout solar arrays, or IROSAs, will increase the space station's total available power. The duo was about 30 minutes behind schedule, which could mean a later start time than the scheduled 7.05 a.m. Central Time, 8.05 a.m. Eastern Time. This will be the, spa the first spacewalk for Cassidy's career and the first for Rubio on their first mission to the International Space Station. This is the first spacewalk for Expedition 68 and the ninth spacewalk of 2022. Josh Cassida arrived to the station as part of Crew 5 in October, and Frank Rubio arrived on a Soyuz rocket back on so September 21st. Cassida, as a part of NASA's SpaceX Crew 5, following their launch to the International Space Station on the fifth commercial crew rotation mission aboard the Inter International Space Station. The crew of astronauts lifted off at 5.01 p.m. Eastern Time on October 5th from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket propelled the crew endurance spacecraft with NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Josh Cassida, along with Koichi Wakata of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency and Anna Kikina of Roscosmos into orbit to begin a six-month science mission aboard the space station. Another important thing happening today, the tanking for NASA's space launch system rocket with the Orion spacecraft at launch pad 39B at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. NASA TV will be showing and airing that coverage today starting at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. NASA's Artemis 1 mission is the first integrated test of the agency's deep space exploration systems, the Orion spacecraft, SLS rocket, and supporting ground systems. Launch of the uncrewed flight test is targeted for November 16th at 1.04 a.m. Eastern Time. And you're currently seeing a live view with beautiful weather at the Cape where SLS is sitting on pad 39A, 39B at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida.
You're currently seeing views inside the Quest airlock where suit up lead NASA astronaut Nicole Mann and JAX astronaut Koichi Wakata are helping the duo of Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio get prepared to venture outside into the vacuum of space today. The crew is now getting their safers installed. The safer or the simplified aid for EVA rescue is essentially a jetpack that the astronauts wear when they perform spacewalks. The safer is worn as a precautionary measure in the unlikely event that an astronaut were to become untethered from the space station. The safer would allow the crew member to safely propel themselves back to the space station. Once the safers are successfully installed on the astronauts, they will be moved through the equipment lock portion of the airlock you see on the top of your screen. Now into the crew lock section. The hatch will then be closed behind them and the final preparations will begin to depressurize the crew lock all the way down to vacuum. They'll then complete suit checks and communication checks with the flight control team here in Houston before venturing outside the hatch. Houston Station in step 11, time was 12.18. We have started a timer for the two-minute purge. Copy 12.18 for both, thanks.
Washington Station, the Medox canisters that we removed are serial number 20 and serial number 22. There's temp stowed on the deck in the step 21, GMT 1223. And we copy all numbers, Duke, thanks, and uh, we're good with that. Okay, we're moving on to step 22. And copy and concur. Station manual leak check is complete. We're moving on to a safer donning. We copy. If you're just joining us, you're looking live inside the Quest airlock of the International Space Station where NASA astronaut Josh Cassida is suited up in this suit with the red stripes. He will be EV-1 today. He's on the left of your screen. And Frank Rubio, EV-2, the suit with unmarked, the unmarked suit will be EV-2 today is being helped by JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata to the top of your screen and Nicole Mann who just went out of view. The duo will head out of the hatch of the International Space Station later this morning where they will be conducting the 254th spacewalk in support of the International Space Station assembly maintenance and upgrades. The duo are suited up now and they have just completed their pre-breathe procedures for this morning. They are now about to don their safers or put on their safers for the day. Again, the safer, the safer or the simple aid for EVA rescue is essentially a jetpack that the astronauts wear when they perform spacewalks. Safer is all worn is worn as a precautionary measure in the unlikely event that the, an astronaut were to become untethered from the space station. The SAFER would allow the crew members to safely propel themselves back to the International Space Station. Once the SAFERs are successfully installed on the astronauts, they will be moved through the equipment lock portion of the airlock you see on the top of your screen. Now into the crew lock section. The hatch will then be closed behind them and the final preparations will begin to depressurize the crew 
crew lock area all the way down to vacuum. They'll then complete suit checks and communication checks with the flight control team here in Houston before venturing outside the hatch. You'll now see Nicole Mann and Koichi Okada working together to install the safer on Josh Cassidy's suit. The spacesuits you see the duo wearing now are EMUs or extravehicular mobility units are essentially a mini life support system providing environmental protection, mobility, and communications for the crew members during their spacewalk. Airlock Houston on one, uh, Koichi and Duke, if you guys can uh, turn on the HECA for EV1 and 2, uh, one by one, please.
If you're just joining us, you're looking live inside the Quest airlock of the International Space Station where NASA astronaut Josh Cassida is currently being helped by NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata to don his safer. That means to put on his safer. Across from him, you see Frank Rubio in the unmarked suit. He'll be EV-2 today, while Josh Cassidy will be EV-1, extra crew, extra vehicular crew member one for today's EVA, the 254th spacewalk in the support of the International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrade. NASA, NASA astronauts Josh Cassidy and Frank Rubio will be conducting today's spacewalk. They will be looking to assemble, install brackets and struts of a modification kit for upcoming solar array upgrades. That's the new ISS rollout solar arrays or IROSAs that will help increase the space station's total available power. The CVA sets the stage for the installation of an IROSA on the S6 truss that will be launched next year on a SpaceX Cargo Dragon flight.
if you're just joining us, you're looking live inside the Quest airlock. <clears throat> you're looking live inside the Quest airlock of the International Space Station where NASA astronaut Josh Casta, suited up in the suit with the red stripes, is donning his safer. And Frank Rubio in the unmarked suit are in preparations for today's spacewalk. That's going to be live coverage today of the 254th spacewalk in support of the International Space Station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. The crew has successfully are proceeding nominally with pre-breathing procedures, including donning of the safer, as mentioned. The team is slightly behind the timeline. They're running about 30 minutes behind, giving us a later start time, essentially a later start time than the 7.05 central time or the 8.05 eastern time of exiting the hatch this morning. We're looking for the crew lock depressed to start around 6.55 central time, 7.55 eastern time this morning. Again, you're getting a view of astronaut Nicole Mann, the suit-up lead this morning, backed by Jack's astronaut Koichi Wakata, helping out the duo of Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio today as they do final preparations for today's, before the start of today's EVA or spacewalk. Again, the duo is helping currently Josh Cassida don his safer Again, that SAFER is a SAFER is an acronym for Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue and is essentially a jetpack that the astronauts wear when they perform spacewalks. The SAFER is worn as a precautionary measure in the unlikely event that an astronaut were to become untethered from the space station. The SAFER would allow the crew member to safely propel themselves back to the space station. Again, once the safers are successfully installed on both astronauts, they will be moved into the crew lock section. Then the hatch will then be closed behind them and the final preparations will begin to depressurize the crew lock all the way down to vacuum. They'll then complete suit checks and communication checks with the flight control team here in Houston before venturing outside the hatch. And you currently see Nicole Mann. Houston, um, one, uh, could you guys please uh, turn off the HECA, please, and uh, make sure that the light goes off, OFF. And we did get uh, tel uh, telemetry, so thanks for this troubleshoot.
If you're just joining us, you're looking live inside the Quest airlock, and you currently see Koichi Okada working with Frank Rubio in the unmarked suit as they try to power cycle his HECA or his helmet camera. He will be hammer, camera number 20 today. And you see Nicole Mann in the back with the red shirt on as she helps Josh Casta in the suit with the red stripes or EV1. He will be helmet cam number 22 today. Nicole Mann is currently moving Josh Cassidy inside the crew lock section while F Frank Rubio still has to go through his safer install. He's currently still attached to the suit donning. He's still attached to the suit donning stand. He will need to work through the same procedures that Josh Cassidy just went through as the duo of Nicole Mann and Koichi Okada attached the safer to his suit. You look down to HECA. Uh, we will get you some uh, steps uh, shortly. Stand by. You may not be able to uh, g get it on uh, without removing the light locks. You just heard a call from Akihoshide, acting Capcom this morning, up to the station, talking to Koichi Wakata as they work on the HECA or the helmet cam on Frank Rubio's suit, trying to power cycle to get that to turn on properly. Uh, are we still standing by for the uh, HECA installation on uh, Frank's helmet? Can we uh, proceed with uh, safer installation while we wait for the procedure? And Koichi, thanks for the report. Hey, uh, if you guys can uh, remove the L's uh, and then uh, work those four latches to put the helmet light on the helmet, uh, you guys are good to do that. And uh, you guys can do the safer dining as well. But uh, if you guys uh, need steps, uh, uh, we'll give you some steps shortly. Okay, Aki, we copy, it's in work. And also, uh, for your essay, when I put Josh in the crew lock, uh, he asked me to turn on his helmet lights, and they would not come on. So I went and I rechecked all connections and wiggled and pushed them together, and then his helmet lights did come on. I didn't notice, there was nothing disconnected. I didn't notice anything that was abnormal. Uh, so his helmet lights are on now, but I wanted you to be aware in case he has a problem later in the EVA. Okay, dude, copy your last report. Thank you very much for letting us know.
If you're just joining us, you're looking inside the Quest airlock as the duo of Nicole Mann, that's astronaut, and jazz astronaut Koichi Wakata work to reinstall the HECA or the camera system attached to the helmet of Frank Rubio, today's extravehicular two crew member that will be going outside the station with EV-1 Josh Cassida to conduct the 254th spacewalk for the International Space Station's assembly, maintenance, and upgrades today. The crew is currently about 30 minutes behind their scheduled timeline of going outside of the hatch at 7.05 a.m. Central Time, 8.05 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, left side, and that P2 Alpha plug is in the way, it seems, to make it difficult. Can I disconnect that plug or no? Stand by, chicken. Duke, uh, first, uh, let's turn off OFF the Reba, and then you can disconnect that connection. You just heard a call from NASA astronaut Nicole Mann and the response from JAXA astronaut Aki Hoshide, Capcom, communicating all the way through depressurization this morning, at which point the ground IV, Zena Cardman, will take over communications and walking the crew to, through today's spacewalk. Cardman was selected as an astronaut in 2017, and she's a part of the turtle class. Again, they're attaching the lights and camera. You'll hear them call out to about a HECA. That's the HD camera attached that will give us views of the spacewalk today from the astronaut's point of view. Once that is attached, we then will go through the procedures to attach the SAFER or the simplified aid for EVA rescue to Frank Rubio as well. And we will then move him from the equipment lock portion of the airlock, you see, to the crew lock session where we just saw Nicole Mann move Josh Cassida to. After Frank Rubio is put into the crew lock section, the hatch will then be closed behind them and the final preparations will begin to depressurize the crew lock all the way down to vacuum. They'll then complete suit checks and communication checks with the flight control team here in Houston before venturing outside the hatch. We are in a short satellite handover period and we'll gain communications with the International Space Station shortly. Okay, the helmet lights are back on. The e hits are installed. TMG is back. P2 Alpha is plugged back into the helmet. Duke, thanks a lot for the report. Uh, once you guys are happy, uh, go ahead and turn on O.N. the Reba, and let's uh, 
check the lights and also just turn on the HECA and check for the green light. And ERCA. Copy, thumbs up. And you're hearing calls from Akihushida to the crew um, discussing the Reba. The Reba is the rechargeable EVA battery assembly. And the crew now has the lights back on the suit and will go on to put the safer on the back of Frank Rubio's spacesuit. Again, the spacesuits you see currently with Frank Rubio in view is the EMU or the extravehicular mobility unit. And they are essentially a mini life support system providing environmental protection, mobility, and communications for the crew members during their spacewalk. Houston, uh, airlock, uh, we have reinstalled the, uh, the helmet mic. HECA and the Reba is on, and uh, we checked uh, HECA light, the LED went on, and the uh, lights are good. And did you want us to uh, turn on the EMU TV also? Hey, firm, please. Okay, uh, EMU TV is on and LED is on. Copy that. And Koji, you can turn those uh, the cameras uh, we can turn, off. Uh, uh, EMU TV and the uh, and lights are all off. Is that okay? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
If you're just joining us, you're looking inside the Quest airlock where NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, suit up lead, and Koichi Wakata are helping Frank Rubio today in the unmarked spacesuit don his safer. They're preparing to put his safer on his back. He's following behind EV-1, which is Josh Cassida. Josh Cassida has currently donned his safer and is inside the crew lock section. And we are waiting for the safer to be put onto Frank Rubio so he can join Josh Cassida in the crew lock section. After the safer is safely installed, the crew will both Frank Rubio and Josh uh, Cassida will be inside the crew section and the hatch will be closed behind them and then the final preparations will begin to depressurize the crew lock all the way down to vacuum. They'll then complete suit checks and communication checks with the flight control team here in Houston before venturing outside the hatch. Airlock on one, uh, just a suggestion. Uh, if you want Frank to grab onto a handrail, that might stabilize him and then it might be easier for a safer dying.
If you're just joining us, we're bringing you live coverage today of the ninth spacewalk of 2022 and the 254th spacewalk in support of the International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. So far, NASA astronaut Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio have completed pre-breathe and are heading towards the crew lock. Cassida now in the crew lock and Rubio finishing safer donning and will be headed to the crew lock shortly. Again, the t today's spacewalk marks 255th, 254th in support of International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. This will be Josh Cassidy's and Frank Rubio's first spacewalk. Cassidy as EV-1 or extravehicular crew member one will wear the suit with the red stripes, helmet cam number 22, Rubio as EV-2 will wear the suit that is unmarked with helmet cam number 20. Again, you're currently seeing Nicole Mann, NASA nice astronaut, and JAX astronaut Koichi Wakata help Frank Rubio don his safer. Again, the SAFER is a simplified aid for EVA rescue, essentially a jetpack that the astronauts wear when they perform spacewalks. A SAFER is worn as a precautionary measure, but has never been used. And it's just worn in the unlikely event that an astronaut were to become untethered from the space station. The SAFER would allow the crew members to safely propel themselves back to the space station. Currently in a brief handover between satellites. We'll have views inside the Quest airlock back for you shortly.
And now with views back, we see Koichi Wakata move Frank Rubio into the crew lock section of the airlock. Again, after both are inside the crew lock section, we're going to close the hatch. They're going to close the hatch behind them and begin the final preparations to depressurize the crew lock all the way down to vacuum. They'll then complete suit checks and communication checks with the flight controllers here in Mission Control Houston before venturing outside the hatch this morning.
If you're just joining us, we're bringing you live coverage today of the ninth spacewalk of 2022 and the 254th spacewalk in support of International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. So far, NASA astronauts Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio have completed pre-breathe and have headed to the crew lock. They're now in the crew lock. The spacewalk today again marks the 254th in support of International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. This will be Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio's first spacewalk. Cassida is EB-1 or extravehicular crew member one and is wearing the suit with the red stripes and he will have on helmet cam number 22. Rubio as EV2 is in this suit that is unmarked and will have helmet cam number 20. The duo are suited up and have been put in the crew lock session, crew lock section of the airlock. You see the duo being assisted by NASA astronaut Nicole Mann and JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata this morning. NASA flight engineers Josh Kessler and Frank Rubio will focus on assembly and installing a modification kit required for upcoming solar array upgrades. The pair will install brackets and struts to support the future installation of an ISS rollout solar array, or IROSA. The arrays will ultimately augment six of the station's eight power channels, increasing the station's total available power from 160 kilowatts up to 215 kilowatts. And currently seeing Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata closing the hatch to the crew lock section of the airlock. Where now the final preparations for this spacewalk this morning can begin. At this time, we're going to start final procedures, which include suit and communication checks as well as depressurization. Depressurization of the airlock will go down to vacuum and it will occur in a two-stage fashion. The crew lock will be taken down to five pounds per square inch of pressure, at which point they'll pause pressurization to do a system check. And then the depressurization will resume to get the crew lock all the way down to vacuum. Once it gets down to vacuum, Josh Casta and Frank Rubio will conduct suit checks and communication checks with Mission Control Houston before they put their suits on the internal battery power, which will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. complete and could you could and could you could you repeat your last please Okay, yeah, we are in the step 77 and uh, step 76 and step 70 are complete. And copy your last, thanks.
Back in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, the Orbit 2 team is ready to support today's spacewalk under the direction of Flight Director Anthony Varia. To his right at the Capcom console is the ground IV, NASA astronaut Zena Cardman, who serves as spacewalk communicator, who will talk directly with the crew during the spacewalk, helping them choreograph timelines and procedures. And are we still, uh, oh, we're not hot mic yet, correct? You guys are hot mic. <laughs> Copy, thank you. Copy that, Aki. We are currently hot mic. Thanks. Yes, we actually <laughs> just went into hot mic, so uh, just so you know. <laughs> Houston Airlock, uh, I understand you will take care of step 78 through 80. Yes, uh, stand by. Airlock Houston, uh, we are complete through step 80. You can pick back up in step 81. We copy that, thank you. Okay, EV2, check back the switch. Press pump power is off on the UIA. I see pump power off ORFF. Verify defense pump enabled LED is lit. Repeat, please. Verify that the depressed pump enabled LED is on. Uh, depressed pump enabled LED is on, ON. Houston, we're standing by for your go to do the clue lock deep rescue call. Uh, Houston, we are go in step AD4. We are executing the crew lock depress decrease. EV2, switch depress pump power on. Wait 10 seconds for complete startup. Okay, depress pump is on. EV2. Switch the depressed pump man ISO valve to open, and you expect an alert tone. Monitor your suit key gauge less than 5.5. Depressed pump man ISO valve open. Copy, expect tone. You do one copy. Flight controllers here in Houston all of all a go for depressurization to begin in the Quest airlock. That depress set to begin just momentarily. DV2, I see pressure dropping on my DCM currently at 13 decimal five. Copy. When the crew lock gets to six, you can expect an alert tone. Copy. Alert tone at six.
crew lock depressed had started during the final steps of EMU pre-brief. The, the crew is currently inside the, the Quest airlock where they've started the depressur depressurization process. Again, this will happen in two stages. First, they'll take the crew lock down to five pounds per square inch of pressure, at which point depressurization will be paused to a, do a systems check. Following this, depressurization will resume and continue all the way down to vacuum. Once vacuum is reached, the two spacewalkers will, will complete suit and comm checks before placing their spacesuit on internal battery power, officially marking the start of today's spacewalk. Again, we expect depressurization to uh, take about 30 minutes.
If you're just joining us, you're seeing live coverage inside the Quest airlock as we begin the 254th spacewalk in support of the International Space Station Assembly maintenance and upgrades. NASA astronaut Josh Cassida and Frank Rubido will be conducting today's spacewalk to assemble and install brackets and struts in a modification kit for upcoming solar array upgrades. The new ISS rollout solar arrays, or IROSAs, will increase the space station's total available power. Cassida as EV-1 or extravehicular crew member 1 will is wearing the suit with the red stripes and helmet cam number 22. Rubio as EV-2 is wearing this the unmarked suit and helmet cam number 20. The duo are suited up and are inside the crew lock section of the airlock where they're currently undergoing depressurization. up on the crew lock at 5 PSIA, We're, you're going to then close the uh, depressed pump man isovalve. you got about 50 millimeters to go. Okay, EV2 copies, and I see the uh, crew lock pressure at 6 decimal zero. I'm showing 5 decimal 6, but I think mine reads a little low. Copy. And that was the crew and Nicole Mann interacting as they discuss getting down to 5 PSI. Again, once the crew lock goes down to 5 PSI or pounds per square inch, they'll pause depressurization to do a system check. The depressurization will resume to get the crew lock all the way down to vacuum. Once it gets down to vacuum, Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio will conduct suit checks and communication checks with Mission Control Houston before they put their suits on internal battery power, which will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. EV2, switch depress pump man ISO valve closed. Expect alert tone. Okay, depress pump man ISO valve is closed. And I have airlock pressure at 5.1. Okay, for both EV1 and EV2, this is your leak check. On your DCM, switch display status until leak check question mark is displayed. EV1 copies and work. EV2 copies and work. EV1 get leak check question mark. And same for EV2. EV1 and 2, switch display, yes. Hold for two seconds and then follow instructions on your DCM. In work. EV2 in work. Counter countdown started. Stand by for EV1. So now I've, I'm now displaying O2 position IV. I think I need to go back and get to it before it times out. There we go. Leak check, question mark, go on to yes. Leak check is in progress for EV1.
Check complete for EV2. Moving O2 actuator to EVA for EV2. Check complete for EV1. Set O2 to EVA and work. Man still inside the equipment section, continuing to monitor depressurization on the Quest airlock where NASA astronauts Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio are suited up and undergoing preparations to eventually venture outside the space station's hatch for today's spacewalk. Copy EV2. And EVA, EVA position for EV1. Okay, copy. We have O2 actuator and EVA for EV1 and 2. EV2, depress pump man ISO valve open. Expect alert time. Depress pump, depress pump man ISO valve is open. Okay, I am opening the emergency MPEF. Monitor your suit key gauge less than 5.5. EV1, copy. EV2, copy. And just a heads up, our next step is at 2 PSI. Copy. Copy that, dude.
KEV2, Lima 2, Delta 2002, depress pump, man, ISO valve closed. Depress pump, man, ISO valve is closed. EV2, on the UIA, switch, depress pump power off. Depress pump power off, ORFF. Okay, Zena, I will hand it over to you for the initial tether configuration, and Frank and Josh, Godspeed, and kick butt out there. Thanks, Duke. Thank you, Duke. Thanks, Duke. EV1 and 2 with you here, ready for your tether config. Uh, EV1 will start here on the easy one, my left D-ring extender. I've got a single waist tether. On the D-ring extender, the gate is closed. The slider is locked, black on black. And that goes up to my mini workstation. On my right D-ring extender, from the safety tether pack, I've got a red hook, gate closed, slider locked, black on black. That goes to a red reel. It is unlocked. From that red reel, we've got a yellow hook going to a green reel. That yellow hook is gate closed, fire locked, black on black. That green reel is unlocked. From the green reel, there's a green hook going back to the red reel, and that green hook is unlocked. Also on that right D-ring extender for me, I've got a waist tether. That anchor is gate closed, spider lock, black on black. That leads to Frank. His anchor for his safety tether. His gate closed, slider lock, black on black for both my waist tether and his safety tether. And then I can give you one more that'll help Frank out the D-ring extender of the airlock. I've got his waist tether, gate closed, slider lock, black on black. All right, thanks, Josh. Hey, Z. So from Josh's waist tether, uh, he already gave you my anchor hook, which I confirm is gate closed, hook lock, black on black. My green reel is unlocked. My green hook is on my red reel, gate closed. Locked. My red reel is unlocked. My yellow hook is to my green reel, which is gate closed, hook lock, black on black. And then my red hook is on my right D ring extender, gate closed, hook lock, black on black. Also on my right D ring extender is my right waist tether, and only waist tether, and that gate is closed, hook lock, black on black. And then that goes out to the hearing extender previously called out by Josh. Okay, EV1 and 2, that's a good config. We've got a quick handover here. When the crew lock DPDT is zero, expect an alert tone. You want copy? Thanks, Eva. EV2, copy. Thank you. And you just heard the spacewalkers, EV1 Josh Cassida and EV2 Frank Rubio talking to ground IV Zena Cardman as they gave the tether configurations um, before they exit the hatch this morning. We're going to listen out for that switch to power and to internal battery power officially marking today's start of today's spacewalk. A U.S. spacewalk start and end time is measured from the time the crew places their spacesuit on internal battery power all the way up until the time repressurization occurs and they're back inside the crew lock following completion of their spacewalking tasks for the day.
Again, we're listening out for that switch to internal battery power. That call out will start the official time of the spacewalk today. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Who's next on the card? I'll bet we're going to do it. Sorry, what's up? Yep. Um, after. Copy, right here. Uh, EV hatch will be, be open after uh, EPDT is zero and we got to go from And then after that, we'll do uh, uh, power to bat. Is that right? Yep. Uh, Duke will uh, close the MPEV. We'll go to bat. We'll disconnect from the SCU. And then uh, I'll do a couple things out here. And then we'll have to check our, uh, our cooling basically after that. Okay. So next step we get to go is open the hatch. Correct. Please. Longer hand over than I expected. It is, yep. I'm seeing this at point five. Where are you at? My screen went blank, and I'm not going to uh, data. Apparently, it's not blank, yeah? It, it was, yep. I just uh, added it down to, to see the uh, pressure. Okay. I'm showing your airlock at 35 millimeters, and you need to get down to 26, and it is moving slow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I don't, we can't do anything anyway until they say anything. I agree. Do you see how long this LOS is? I see we have good comms. Um, Houston, how do you hear? We've got you loud and clear, and yeah, that's right. We're still showing a little bit above 0.5 PSI. Copy that. Thanks, Nina. For your awareness, we're estimating about four more minutes on this depress. Thank you for the heads up. Copy. And uh, Venus, just one request. Uh, when we have LOSs, when you come back, could you just check in with us just to give us a better essay? Absolutely. Yeah, my apologies. That last one was just a quick handover, so I've had comms. No worries. That was the crew to Nicole Mann and Zena Cardman confirming that they do have a little bit more left of G press to go. Looking for the crew to get down, uh, the crew lock pressure to get down below 0.5 PSI. Um, they still have a little bit ways to go and they're about four minutes away from that, reaching that PSI. Again, once that PSI is reached, they will have about five minutes post depress and they will power their battery onto internal power starting start the official start of today's spacewalk.
EV1N2, we are below 0.5 PSI. You are go to open the hatch and stow. Houston EV1, copy that we are go to open the hatch and uh, just be advised you are broken. Copy broken and this will be a night pass when you emerge. Thank you for that, up. We just heard confirmation from Zena Cardman to the crew that they are below the 0.5 PSI and are go for hatch opening. Again, we are looking for that call for to turn on internal battery power, and then the crew will head out to open the hatch. Okay, Frank, it might be catching on the uh, strip bag now. Okay, checking. You're clear. Clear. It's on. And Zena, the hatch is open and in the hatch keep. Copy, hatch open. Okay, emergency MPEV closed. Emergency MPEV closed. Copy, Duke. EV1 and 2 on your DCM. Switch power to bat, stagger your switch throws, and expect a warning tone. And work for EV1. I'll let you know, Frank. Copy. And an O2 rate zero, SOP rate. I think that's expected. EV1 is in back. I copy EV1 and that. Two also in that. Copy EV1 and two. Switch your display to Pro to verify a functional display. No joy for EV1. And EV2, I have an end status. Good this, good this point. And just to clarify, Josh, was that no display? What was your last? No display. The display is dark. Copy, Josh. We're working on that. Just one sec. Okay. I've got another message right now that I can't see, but I'll throw it. Josh, do you have a blank display, or are you seeing a message right now? 
blank display, but I just had a horrible tone that I could not see, of course, because the screen was blank, but I did pro it. Okay, Josh, we're going to run a procedure for your display loss during power transfer. I'm going to give you a heads up here. You're going to be running open, but do not perform your cuff checklist, warm restart for calm failure. That's page 28, steps 4 decimal 3 to the end. So open, but do not perform. And page 28, I'm going there now. Do not perform yet. I understand it's going to be steps 4.3 to the end. That's correct. In warm restart for calm failure, I will lead you through steps starting at 4.3 to the end of the page to reset the DCM display. If you unexpectedly lose calm or encounter any issues, you can use the cuff checklist to complete the response. You want copies? Frank, I can talk you through this real quick if you want some essay. Yep, I'm on page 28 with you. Okay. Yep, thank you. So I, we're not doing it yet until uh, we get to go, but the power's already in back for me. Copy, same for me. We'll take uh, probably just me to off. Or sorry, the LED is off. And then I'll go fan off, go back to SCU. I'll wait for seven seconds, and then I'll go back to back. When it's complete, then I'll go fan back on. I see the same stuff. Yeah, that's correct. So, Frank, on the UIA, switch power for EV1 off and check that the power EV1 LED is off. The affected EMU will be without a fan and calm after a couple of steps. Okay, copy that. So for EV2, power EV1 is coming off, EMU LED is off. Okay, in this yeah, procedure, the fan and power will be taken off for seven seconds. While the fan is off, you will be without cooling and CO2 removal. Overheating and the loss of visibility from fogging are possible. There will be no calm until you take the power back to bat. If fan operation is delayed or not restored, the power is not restored after switching back to bat. Open and lock the helmet perch valve to restore vent flow. Take a moment to confirm power and fan switch access. The specific actions will be to switch the fan off, switch power to SCU, wait seven seconds, switch power back to bat, then switch fan back to on. When you're complete with these actions, all switches will be toward you. Copy, end state will be switches all back towards me. The order is gonna be fan off, then power to SCU, eight, seven seconds, and power back to bat, and fan back to on. If we have trouble or I'm fogging up, I will open my helmet perch valve. That's exactly correct. Okay, on your DCM, switch fan off. Expect fan switch off tones in seven seconds. Switch your display back to pro. Fan's coming off, and then I'm going to go to pro, and then you want me to wait for your call on battery to SCU. In seven seconds, you can continue by switching your power to SCU to power down the suit. Sorry, my understanding was fan off, power SCU, and then wait seven seconds. That's correct. Okay, so I don't need your go for power to SCU. My understanding is fan is coming off and power is going to SCU. You've got so exactly come back right. On with that in seven seconds. All right, here we go. More two.
And you just heard Ground IVs in a Cartman working with Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio to get their displays on their hut or their chest plate, um, their control panel to come back. They had a loss of display when they switched to internal power. And again, EVA is seven hours and 18 seconds in. And power back and fan is on. I've got a screen that's reading each two row is off. Josh, I got you loud and clear. Thanks. Josh, we hear you and we can jump back into the depress cue card. That's great news. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks for the help. So you've got both functional displays now. On the UIA, switch power for EV1 and 2 off and check that the power LEDs, all four of them, are off. Stand by. Copy, Sandy, bye. Okay, I've got a good stream. Sorry, continue. Okay, EV2, power for EV1 is off. LED is off. Power EV2 coming off, and LED is off. Copy. On the DCM, disconnect your SU from the DCM and install the DCM cover. Work for EV1. EV2 and work. And you heard come. Okay, can you let us know how much? Is it a small amount, a couple droplets, or more than that? Free floating, and then I've got. Um, maybe 40%, 30 and 40% of the bottom left connector. That's the uh, I think Snow's the best description. And uh, EV2 had pretty much the same thing. Okay, hang on, we're checking, guys. Okay, we feel comfortable, especially if it's not increasing. You guys can stow the SCU in his pouch and finish installing your DCM cover. In the pouch, working on the cover. And uh, EV2, SCU is disconnected in the pouch, and DCM covers on. Same for EV1. Okay, on the crew lock, check the depressed pump man ISO valve is closed. That ISO valve is closed. Take your temperature control valve to max hot. And work for EV1. And work EV2. And max hot for EV1. That's hot for EV2. Switch water on. Work for EV1. And it's on for EV1. And EV2 water is on. Check that your DCM is blank and bite off. 
Blank and bite off for evening one. Evening two, blank, bite off. Okay, take your temperature control valve as desired. Let us know your setting and report all subsequent changes to us. In work. EV1, and I'm uh, four and a half, and we'll fill in future changes. And EV2 uh, is at four. Okay, copy three and a half and four. Report your suit P cage. Actually, that was four decimal five for EV1 for the uh, TBC, or TB setting. And I'm showing 4.2 on my UP gauge. And EV2, 4.2. Okay, copy. Those are good pressures. Set your visors as required. You are now coming out into a day pass. I agree. I see it. Thank you. EV2, copy. As you're set for EV1. Uh, Dean, I'm going to wait until I uh, <clears throat> pass the bags to bring mine down. Okay, copy, Frank. Josh, you can open the hatch thermal cover. And understand attaching it to the stowage E ring, is that right? That's correct. Yeah, the hook will go to the stowage tether point and cinch the strap snug until you see six lines visible on the tail. And at 8.14 a.m. Central Time, the 254th Spacewalk in support of Station Assembly, Maintenance and Upgrades has begun. Cassidy and Rubio now will work to open a thermal cover and make their way outside the sta space station hatch to begin their work for the day. Thank you. I'll see you out there in a minute, Frank. Sorry, Josh. Thermal cover now open, and they are making their way out of the hatch. The crew now 15 minutes into today's EVA as they exit the hatch currently. crew had to rectify some displays as they switch from internal power switch to internal powers the display module is the control panel for the mini spacecraft in which they are inhabiting during the space walk today the EMU the switches control and gauges are on an electronic display on the EMU and astronauts can operate the primary life support subsystem from that module. So that's now back up and running. And the crew was given the go to exit the hatch. I'm ready for cable bag. Understand we're going to five, five, four. Copy that, cable bag coming your way. And Josh, for you, we'll have you turn on your HECA as well. Okay. I've got the bag out. If you don't mind, I'm going to put that on 554. Absolutely. And then I will. You got it. And we see EV1, that's Josh Cassida, was the first to exit. And he will now receive some materials, the struts and bags that will be used in their spacewalk today. I'm grabbing it. It's closer to your hand right yep. now. I got it. Thank you. You're tethered to it? Uh, it is tethered, the big. Big hook. 
is connected. So the one you want to release just the one that goes back to the airlock. Yep. And you know, Becca is in work. All right, Josh. Uh, cable bag is free. Jeez. Okay, I heard that a different way. <laughs> You know, heck is on. I've got a good green light. Copy, Josh. EV2, you can transfer the strut bag to Josh. Josh, when you receive the strut bag, stow it on your Good BRT work. with the tape toward your feet. Honestly, Frank, if you wouldn't mind pausing so I can get my red on it. Copy that. All right, starting to come out the hatch. Yeah. Okay, it's about a fourth of the way out the hatch. Okay, I don't see the handrail yet. Nope. Should be starting to see the handrail now. Okay, now, can you rotate it clockwise? Work. Good. And unfortunately, we put the anchor on the same line glass as where I need to go right now. You know, I think I can get two hooks on there. It's just a challenge. If you agree, I'm going to do that. All right, bring it back towards me, Frank, please, if you can. All right, we got one hook on. Okay. I have good control of the tether. All right, let's do it. Here comes the tether, and if you would just continue to control of the strut bag. You know, we've got a BRT rep on the tape end. We've got the BRT on there. Dolls are closed and paddles are out. And I'm going to try to get this thing oriented, the tape towards my feet. All right, Josh, that sounds like a great plan. And once you're in a good config, EV2 can egress the airlock. And Frank, you can then turn on your HECA after you egress. Copy there. Frank. Doors. Okay. The monster.
is clear for your egress. Copy that. It's coming out. Good. That brings a big smile to my face. Looking good, guys. Copy, Frank. It's a little warm out here in the sun, and now it's seven. Copy, Josh. Hey, Josh. Can you verify that I'm pushing the uh, echo button here? I can help you. Um, yeah, so what I did, oh, watch careful. That that looks loose. Yeah, that's. I feel like I'm pushing on it, and it's not giving me resistance. Yeah, uh, so it looks, uh, assembly on top looks loose. Um, Nina, can you see in my WVS? Checking, my we echo? don't have your WVS yet. We're looking. Would you like me to turn on uh, the EMU TV? Frank, um, so I can show you how to turn it on, but you're right. I don't know that that's the goal right now. Yeah. What I was thinking is I can provide the resistance, or you can, and the other person pushes the button, and we'll just leave it alone. I guess, are you able to push? Yeah, I could. Um, let me just make sure that it's secure. And just to it confirm, is, uh, is Frank Erka loose? That's right. The entire assembly on top of the helmet uh, just is... There's some free play there, and um, when he goes to push the button, the assembly moves ever so slightly. The play is a total of an inch fore and aft, uh, maybe two inches aft, and uh, none uh, zenith and nadir on his body. Okay, we copy. Stand by one. Okay, Josh, we'll have hold you on. Turn it on here. hold on to Frank's Urca just to provide resistance and press the button for him. Good, I'll do it. We're good. We're good. I got it, Frank. Okay. Yeah, I recommend maybe not even. Yeah, go for it. Let's, uh, let's see what I'm thinking, and then uh, move out. That's right. So let's get a body check net. What? You want to go ahead with putting in your bag on? I'm going to try not to get in your way here, but I'm going to do a little plane change with this okay. behemoth. And hey, guys, back with you after a quick handover.
okay. So, um, you understand we're pressing on, and uh, Frank's just going to minimize his uh, interaction with his Urca. Do you agree? We like that plan. Okay. Let me know when you've got good video from, from, from my EMU, and then uh, he's getting his uh, cable bag on his BRT right now. Okay, copy. And confirming both of you have your HECA on now, yes? Affirmative for it. Oh, sorry, good job, Sean. That's confirmed. We've got two green lights just for HECA at this point. Copy. While you work there, um, just a heads up, I have everything cinched down that I can on the BRT. This is a decent amount of mass. So if you see me going up to see the bird, it's, uh, it's at a weird orientation. Please let me know. Will do. Yeah, I don't know if you can pull the, uh, <clears throat> the top that's closest to your head, uh, closest to your shoulder, just to kind of orient it parallel to your body. Yeah. You know, if you just keep keep going in that direction. Yeah, the airlock just makes it hard to yep. get clearance. But uh, I'm going to rotate my body. Actually, right there, it's about parallel with your body. Okay. I'm just going to rotate my body and then mock it down as best I can. Okay. That's the best I can do for cinching that down, and I think that's going to work out okay. I'll keep an eye on it. If you're ready uh, for body checks, Theta, we'll get on those. Nice work, guys. Yes, we are ready. And Frank, if you can take an extra close look at Josh's left safer handle, we may have seen it bumped. Okay. Yep, your uh, left safer handle is up. Let's just fix it up before starting the budget. A little bit uh, aft, you're on the PGT, a little more. Put your hands on it. Push down. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Let's blame that on EV3 here. All right. Do you want me to start or do you want to start? I uh, only have two green lights. Are you looking for a second, Zena, before we get started? If you're able to. Uh, absolutely, we'll take WVS as well, and Josh, you can also help Frank with that if needed. And we can also have Josh turn Frank's light on as well, just to provide some resistance, not bump it any further, and then we'll just leave it on for the duration. Copy. I am not getting a green light back here for... No, I see it. It was on. Oh, it was on. Yep. Here. Okay. Maybe I'll push it in. It's on. Okay. Just at a weird angle for me. Yep. Let me get. Oh, yours is already on. Great. And your light. You got two lights on right now. Could you um, push it up so that it's pointing forward? Uh, this light. Got it. Great. Uh -huh. Awesome. Thank you. No, nope, I haven't done it yet. Thanks. 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 Now it's up. Awesome. Thank you. I got two green lights for Frank. I've got one, two. If you rotate to your left, three tabs up, and I've got two safer, safer handles down for Frank. Okay, copy. And if you can get eyes on his tethers and tools in a good config as well, and then we'll take a buddy check for Josh. All right, so you'll probably swing your back back a little bit, um, and I assume you've got a red on it. I can't see do. your red. Yep. Um, and your tethers look clear, because one is coming to me. Took a good config. Yes, copy that. And I have good WVS lights, good heckle lights. 
Tap your camera forward, please, just a little bit. Tap my camera forward? Yeah. It's blocking the tab on the right. Oh, this camera. Yep. Perfect, thank you. I see one, two, three taps up. And good, tools and tethers configured. Okay, copy. Can we get both of your safer handles for Josh? I apologize for that. And left handle is down, and right handle is down. Copy. That's a good config for both of you. We'll take a baseline HAP check as well. Dry 3v1. Dry 3v2. Copy dry HAPs. All right, EV-1, you can translate starboard to the anchor hook location. That's at the S1, S3 interface, just nadir of the starboard seat of cart. Frank, meanwhile, you can tend the hatch thermal cover closed as able. And reminder, you've got that uh, wire tie if you need. I'm going to wait till I can unhook to fully close it, but I'll close it partially. Yeah, copy, Frank. And just a quick reminder, as you're translating, don't touch the radiator, flex hoses, or tusk cables, and go slowly with that strut bag. Thanks, Fina. We'll go. All right, Josh, have a good trip. Thank you. See you soon. If you're just joining us, you're watching live coverage today of the 254th Spacewalk in support of the International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. NASA astronauts Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio have exited the hatch this morning at 8.14 a.m. Central Time and are now translating to their work sites where they will have two separate tests beginning worksite preparation and then EV-1 Josh Cassida will begin the 1BH fixture removal while Frank Rubio EV-2 will begin the 3A IROSA cable routing. The duo will come together to come back together later to build and install the upper triangle build for the mask mast canister at the 1B power channel. Copy, and Josh, we've got your heck of you looking good. I can see you from here. It looks like the bag is uh, parallel to your body so far. Thanks.
and we're currently getting helmet camera views from EV1 or Josh Cassida today. He's currently translating to his work site where he will initially begin work site preparations and then jump into removal of the 1BH fixture. Frank, I'm under the MT. Copy, under the MT. I can see you again. Looks good. Bag is uh, about eighty percent parallel. Okay, okay. Looking good, guys. Frank, we've got your HECA now too. Okay, copy that. You'll hear the acronym APFR today, which stands for Articulating Portable Foot Restraint, and it is what the crew members will use to restrain their feet at their respective workstations today. Another acronym you'll hear throughout the day is BRT, which stands for Body Restraint Tether. Outstanding. For your EV1 anchor hook, you're looking for S3 handrail 3011. That's Nader of the starboard seat of cart. Should be kind of a vertical handrail. I've got it now, and I'm going to put my anchor there. EV1 anchor is down on 3011 gate closed fighter lock black on black. Copy. That's great. You can take Frank's EV2 anchor hook to S1 handrail 3217. That should be just to the right of 3011. I see it in work. Two anchor hooks are down on three two one seven. We close slider lock black on black. Copy, Josh. You'll be giving Frank a go to release his waist tether. Frank, you have a go to release your waist tether. Copy. I heard uh, three two one seven and go to release my waist tether. It work. And closing thermal cover. Copy. I see, no, I see uh, thermal cover closed. Copy, thermal cover closed. All right, Frank, you can translate up to the three alpha mass canister. Meanwhile, Josh, you're translating to the non radiator side of one Bravo. understand continue on 
meter, eventually. So I'm on the uh, meter spur. Copy. Copy, Frank. And yeah, for Josh, you're going outboard. on the non-radiator side to the nader handrail path. Now with the thermal, co th thermal cover to the hatch closed, Frank Rubio is now translating to his work site. And again, Frank Rubio is headed to the 3A mass canister, canister to route Irosa cable. And I, awesome, looking good. Currently in a brief handover between satellites, but we'll have views for you shortly. Again, Casta is translating to the 1B mass canister, and Rubio is translating to the 3A mass canister, where they'll start worksite preparations and then, be, then begin their first task for the day. For Casta, that's the 1B H fixture removal, and for Rubio, that is routing of the 3A IROSA cables. We'll have Ratty S-band here for a couple of minutes, but still with you. And for both of you, before you cross the Sarge, just check that your gauntlets are in place. Gauntlets in place, 3 v one Get your copies. After completion of their first task, the duo will, be, will come together and begin work at the 1B mass canister together, installing a modification kit or support structure. Copy, Frank. I'll just uh, hang out here for a little bit. All right, EV1's across the surge. Nice work. At S4, you can continue outboard on the non-radiator side. Following that nader handrail path, you're looking for 2219. Broken. Break At S4, you can continue outboard on the non-radiator side. Following that nader handrail path, handrails 2219, 2222. All right, I just passed 2223. Three two. AV2, I'm at the SARS. I'm at our both down. Copy, Frank. At S4, you'll be translating to the Zenith side, the non keel 3 alpha side, and continuing outboard. Copy, Zenith. Understand, I'm going 2125. 
a little bit more sober than Ben Zena. That sounds like a good plan, Josh. And yeah, at the outboard end of S5, you'll be crossing the A-frame over to the Zenith side. Currently seeing images of the ISS rollout solar array augmentation plan. Again, currently we have Josh Cassida heading to the 1B mass canister where they'll have the 1B power channel and a future upgrade with a solar array. And we have Frank Rubio heading to the 3A mass canister where he'll be routing the cabling for an already um, placed solar array. He's routing the cabling where they already have a modification place in place. Again, we're looking for some future IROS upgrades. Copy, you're at 2119. That's great. You can stow the cable bag on those S5 handrails, 2119 and 2103, with the bag parallel to the long axis of the truss. I'll drop it by Green Hook, 2008. Copy, 
Yeah, absolutely. The strut bag is going on the outboard non-radiator corner and use the integral straps on the bag to handrails 2057, 2013, 2011. Two zero one one will be kind of in the middle of the IEA, or in the middle of the outer edge of the IEA, and two zero one three is the corner. Thank you. I'm uh, local down on two zero one two right now. Copy. I have uh, both sets of cables, right three alpha and left three alpha on a tether on the um, group and heading out to the bracket. Okay, perfect. Now that you're readied and translating out to the three alpha mounting bracket, just a reminder, no sudden movements on the mass canister and avoid cyclic loading. I've got an integral down on 2011, and I'm removing my PRT. Understand the handrail is going to go in, and the tape is going to go outward. That's correct, Josh. Yep, that handrail toward the radiator and tape toward the mass canister. You know, the uh, square scoop is on the bracket. Because of the way that the uh, receiver is mounted, I can't quite point the uh, handle of the square scoop completely away from the mass canister. It's kind of canted at a 45-degree uh, angle. Okay, Frank, we see that. Let's just, uh, we'll confirm if that's a good configuration. Okay, copy.
we're happy with that scoop config, you can go ahead and remove your RET and start routing the IRSA cables. Copy, thank you. You're currently seeing a dual box where both Josh Cassidy EV1 in the suit with the red stripes on your left and Frank Rubio in the unmarked suit on your right. Both are at their workstations where Frank Rubio on the right will be routing the 3A cables for the IROSA upgrades future IROSA upgrades and on your left Josh Cassida has the strut bag but will begin to remove the 1BH fixture again this will be necessary for the power upgrades and the solar arrays um, the future work that's coming for both of you we are at one hour PET both of your met rates are looking good thanks Fina thanks Fina Vino, I'm at the uh, uh, handrail for the right lower strut on the upper stanchion, and I've got my uh, mark here, and I'll put that on the um, wire tie that's currently on this handrail. Copy, Frank. I do have the, uh, I need the other set of cables. We copy, Frank. Good catch. Okay, Zena, I'm not going to miss that bag. Down and three places. <laughs> nice, Josh. Hey, nice job with that bag, Josh. We've done over there, cable guy. It's nice to see you. <laughs> Zeno, verify this is three twists? Yes, this will be three twists on the handrail stanchion closest to the mounting bracket. Copy. And also a reminder, there's an indicator line on the arrow of the cable here. Affirmative, and I see the right cables with the red candy stripes now uh, wire tied at the, at the uh, black mark to the lower Right lower uh, stroke, upper handrail. Copy, Frank. That looks great. We're currently seeing an HD view from Frank Rubio as he's currently routing the cables for the 3A mass canister.
Green Hokey Park on the red reel. Copy, Josh. You can translate Nader over the A-frame and continue inboard to the seat cart. You'll follow S5 handrail 2125 again. Josh Cassida just got the AOK -okay to translate further to his work site where he'll be removing the 1BH fixture. He had some work site preparation to do as he stowed away the strut bag because he wouldn't be needing it just yet to remove the H fixture. Frank, I'm crossing the surge again, and Zena, my gauntlets are down. Copy, Josh. Copy, Josh. Again, you're seeing live helmet cam views as Duo translate and finish worksite task. Storage of the uh, extra cable on the uh, mass canister of arm rail. Do you want three clips on that also? Sure. 
Thank you. Yeah, A firm, three twists on that. I'm at uh, risk one here on the starboard cedar cart. And got a good full tilt test of the EPFR into the width extender. So I'm going to go ahead and bet to the EPFR itself. Copy, Josh. That sounds like a good plan. Currently in the orbital nighttime, the International Space Station and the crew, about 257 statute miles above the Earth, right as they're passing over Iran. And given the orientation, Zena, I think I'm going to go. Uh, I stand by on that. Okay, I'm ready to the APSR. I'm going to release the width extender. Copy, Josh. As you know, the left cable bundle is wire tied to the left lower strut, upper stanchion of the upper handrail, with uh, three turns at the black mark. Copy, Frank. That's perfect. currently seeing HECA views, or that's the HD camera views, from Josh Cassida's helmet cam. He has translated over to grab his APFR, or articulating portable foot restraint, and his worksite interface fixture extender. APFR and width extender on my BRT. Okay, perfect, Josh. You can head back out to S6 with 38. And reminder, prior to crossing the Sarge, check your gauntlets.
Those gauntlets are in space. Copy, Josh. All right. You can continue outboard on the non-radiator side, following that same handrail path, 2219, 2222. And at the outboard end of S5, cross the A-frame to the Zenith side. And ground IV, Zena Carmen just gave Josh Cassida the okay to head back after a gauntlet check. You'll hear that periodically, um, what's called a gauntlet glove and hap check. Good, man. Yeah, it's, um, the only downside is the wire tie at the very end that, was, that came with the cables. Yeah. The tent, uh, on both sides, it's been in the wrong spot, so I'm having to just remove it and reset it just because it doesn't reach. Otherwise, it's, uh, Sounds great. The view sure changes every 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Moon is pretty though. Should go there. That's a great idea. The agency, not we, me and you. Well, either way. <laughs> Can I come? One hour and 17 minutes in today's EVA. We have Josh Cassidy's helmet camera on the left and Frank Rubio's helmet camera on the right. Frank Rubio continues to work at the 3A mass canister as he's routing the IROSA cables. And on the left, we see Josh Cassidy translating back to his work site with his APFR articulating portable foot restraint and worksite interface fixture extender in tow where he will set up along the IEA or the Integrated Electronics Assembly and he will be ready to then remove the 1BH fixture which is needed to install the modification kit. So looking at that side, we can see it. And I see one, two, I see three soft captures and good concern. Copy, three soft captures. That's good. And just make sure the upper surface is clear of MLI.
Greenhook down at 2008. Copy, Josh. Greenhook at 2008. That's a good config. Now heading aft, correct? As you know, so the uh, upper surface was clear of MLI. Now on the right side also looks like it's got a MLI and good config. Okay, copy, Frank. And while you're there, we'll also have you go ahead and uh, just do a HECA pan of the ModKit MLI for us. And Josh, for you, at the One Bravo IEA, you'll be crossing over to the radiator side, following handrail 2032, fair leading on the inboard radiator corner, 2034. Okay, I'm at 3-4 right now. And Tina, do you want that, uh, I guess at night, do you want that pan, what position do you want that pan from? And Frank, if you just get on the mounting bracket and give us a good view of both the mid-strut MLIs with your HECA view. Frank, that's looking really good. All right, Frank, we are really happy with that. Yeah, that looks great. We can have you uh, clean up okay. there and inventory the cable bag. Okay, copy. Nina, can you give me a read ahead on the install of the SNA CFR? Absolutely. Yep. Once you're outboard on the Zenith radiator side, you're looking for WIF 38. This will be 6 Golf 5 for the WIF X. Right, give me the clocking again. Clocking 6 for the WIF X. Awesome. Thanks. If you're just joining us, we're in one hour and 24 minutes in today's spacewalk, the 254th spacewalk in the support of the International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. NASA astronauts Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio have exited the hatch. They officially went on battery power at 8.14 a.m. 
Central Time. And everything in the contingency uh, basement still works good. Do you want me to inventory every piece of equipment in that? Checking, Frank. Because okay. I thought we did an inventory at the end. Yeah, we're good with that, Frank. With that, you can close the cable bag, stow it on your BRT, and head outboard to S6. Copy, thanks. And that was Zena Carmen, the ground IV, NASA astronaut selected in 2017, talking to NASA astronaut Frank Rubio. He has completed his first test, which was the 3A mass canister cable routing for the IROSA modification kit and for future upgrades to that same power channel. He will complete stowage of his cable bag, putting it on his BRT or body restraint tether and head towards this starboard six truss, which is where the 1B mass canister is and where he, along with Josh Cassida, will complete today's primary task, which will be the build out of the modification kit for the 1B power channel. Again, you're currently seeing the ISS rollout solar array augmentation plan Cable routing was just finished at 3A. They will be building today's modification kit, brackets and struts, on the 1B power channel or mast canister for a future upgrade for an ISS rollout solar array. Just confirm we're looking for single line to six on the list. X. That's correct. Single line, clocking of six, and let us know when you're ready for the rest of the settings. Sure. Yeah, can I take that? The Golf Five. And we're also looking for black on black and good pull twist test on the WIFX. I would give that. We're black on black, good pull twist test. And Gulf 5, just remind me, uh, it's a little dark out here. Is that 90 degrees? That will be straight up and down up. from the straight IEA. Up. Yep. You know, I'm heading outboard on F5, now on SX. Copy, Frank. You'll be heading outboard on the Zenith non-radiator corner following S6 handrail 2003. Copy. And a same... A uh, reminder for you, as before, to not translate on that BCDU MLI near 2008. Okay. I see uh, 2007, verify that's where I dropped my green hook. 
Correct, 2007. That'll be just inboard of EV-1's hook. Copy. And right now, uh, Josh's safety reel is, one of his reels is um, right next to my Right next to where I'm going to drop mine. Do I want his reel above or below where I draw my green hook? Uh, Zenith or Nader? Um, either one, Frank. Just let us know where what config you wind up in, and we're expecting Josh's to be further outboard of yours. <coughs> It is. It's on 2008. For some reason, the reel is it's just getting pulled back towards um, where his anchor hook is. Okay, copy, Frank. I'll just keep his on Nader. We copy, Frank. Gina, can I break in on the settings? Okay. Good, Frank. Absolutely. So mine will be over yours. Sounds good. Okay. You know, I understand we want a call. Oh, I'm sorry, the extension. We want to extend the WFX. So I've got the uh, pitch of three out. Um, one second. Copy golf. Okay, and the extension? Extension will be five. Okay, thanks. And then the clocking on the uh, APFR, you have a second. APFR 12. Okay. I see a single line on the width X. That's where the 12 is going to go. I think it's already there, actually. We were expecting it, I think, in a different config. Copy. I've got a 12 at the single. I've got a 12 at the single end, at the single line at the far end of the width X. Can you confirm that's the clocking we wanted, even though we thought it was going to be in a different config? Copy. On the CD card. Yeah, that should be the clocking. We were also expecting something different, but if it is in a clocking of 12, that is the correct config, and single line is correct. Okay. All right. 12 lines up with the, the single line. Uh, I've got my HECA back on, and I'm ready for the next settings. Copy. Remainder of the APFR settings will be Tango, Tango, Fox, 12. And check the pitch knob can be depressed. Okay. Tango, Tango, is that Fox, 12? Affirm. Tango, Tango, Fox, 12. Awesome. Thanks. You know, my green hook is on the inboard stanchion of 2007. Both reels unlocked. Copy, Frank. That's a good config. You can continue outboard, and at the S6 IEA, you'll be stowing the cable bag on the inboard non radiator corner. Copy. And a reminder right, to. Just to confirm, route... I've got a good pull. Go ahead, Josh. Good pull twist test on both. With extender and APSR, I'm grabbing my uh, BRT rep. Or just up now. Perfect. And just confirm the pitch knob can be depressed on the APFR as well. Not done yet, but I will absolutely give you that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks. You know, uh, I'm out here at the inboard uh, forward corner of S6. 
and I see handrails 2032 and 2009. Perfect. That is exactly where you want to stow the cable bag, and a reminder to route the bag tethers under Josh's safety tether. You'll want the bag parallel to the short axis of the IEA and the handrail pointed toward the mass canister. Okay, copy, and uh, Josh's uh, safety reel is mostly on the, uh, on the other part of that six, or it should be a non-factor? Super. Holy, just a heads up, this uh, pitch is really stiff on the APS floor. Josh. Copy, Josh. And Josh, after you've tried using both hands, we also do, as a reminder, have that crow foot tool if necessary. We know this APFR is sticky. Sorry, you broke up there in the middle. Uh, two hands, and what was the other thing? We do, if you need it, have the crow foot tool. We know this APFR is sticky. Okay, Z, I've got it in Tango Tango, but I can't get the button to be depressed. I mean, it's not fully in a detent or something? Yeah, copy, Josh. Um, I think that means it's not fully locked. Are there detents? As you can probably see there in the HECA, we're lined up right on Tango Tango, and I'm going to go clockwise to lock. Copy, Josh. And we actually don't have your HECA right now. We've got some ratty WVS view, so we're rely relying on your words here. Okay, no joy on being able to depress. I mean, I can depress it like, I don't know, 16th of an inch, 18th of an inch? And that is as far to the clockwise lock position I can go. Copy, Josh. Does it feel stable to you? I, in pitch, yeah, because it was so hard to get it into Tango Tango. Um, I can try to put some effort into it to see if it will uh, move in pitch, if you're good with that. Yeah, we're good with that, Josh. All right, here it goes. I can't get her to budge. Okay, Josh, we're happy with that config, and you can continue.
Thank you. I heard Fox. Fox is what we're looking for. Yeah, it'll be Fox 12 for the rest of the settings. Oh, good, because that's where I put it, and that looks great. Outstanding. All right, we'll take a glove hap and gauntlet check from both of you. All right, so looking at the gloves here on my right glove, no change. On my left glove, no change, gauntlets are covered, and half is dry. Give me about one, one minute. Copy, Josh, and copy, Frank. No problem. And Josh, when you have a free moment, we'll have you try recycling the HECA one more time. Okay, it's on. I see a green light. Copy, Josh. Thanks a bunch. And data for uh, EV2, I have a uh, good right glove, um, really in the same condition. There are some, like, black markings on it. I'm guessing I just touched something that um, it doesn't look like grease or anything, maybe Sharpie uh, from the other lines. And then left glove, RTV remains intact, no changes. Copy. That's a good config. And we'll also take your gauntlets and HAP. Both gauntlets are down, half is dry. Copy. You know, I understand I'm going to the TVA bag, is that correct? That's exactly right, Josh. You're heading to the strut bag to grab the TVA bag and tuck it behind your mini workstation. A reminder, when you get to the mass canister, no sudden movements, avoid cyclic loading. Okay, and I'm going via the APFR. The other cable bag is down on that corner, heading out towards the uh, jump bag. Copy, Frank.
Yes, you are free from the fence. Thank you. Sorry, wire tires are undone. Wire tires are undone. Yeah, gotcha. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. If you're just joining us, we're one hour and 46 minutes into today's EVA, or spacewalk, where Josh Cassida, EV1, and Frank Rubio, EV2, are outside the station and prepared to install the 1B modification kit for future IROSA upgrades. Frank Rubio, EV2, designated on the right of your screen from his helmet cam view, has completed his first task of the day, which was the 3A IROSA cable routing. And he's now met back up with Josh Cassida as they head to the 1B mass canister. Cassida will remove the 1BH fixture, which will be needed for the duo to install the modification kit. Again, these this modification kit sets up future power upgrades by the addition of an IROSA or an ISS rollout solar array to be added at a later date. You'll be retrieving the silver PGT and staging it on a nearby handrail for the upper triangle assembly. We recommend handrail 2012, but up to you. I'll take it the handrail you recommend. 2012. 012, copy. We just heard Ground IV NASA astronaut Zena Cardman to Frank Rubio about stowage of the PGT. And the PGT is the pistol grip tool, and that will be used today to assemble and install that upper triangle or that triangle shaped 
modification kit to the 1B mass canister. Josh, for you, you'll be stowing that TBA bag on the zenith stanchion of that long handrail. Okay, thanks. The TBA bag is really hard to keep out of your face, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Got a little mind of its own there. I keep trying to tuck it under my chin. Not working. Zenith's on the Zenith tension. Perfect. Nice work. Okay, now that you've got that stowed, you can attach your mini workstation adjustable from the H fixture to the middle stanchion of the BGA handrail. Leave some slack to avoid side loading the H fixture. Uh, you know, I have the bracket uh, right side, and I believe the uh, upper right. Perfect. Yeah, you're looking Is for the, the uh, upper right straps, that I'll put on. straps three and four. That's correct. And for the mounting bracket, you can also keep it tethered to the bag and lock out the ret if required. Copy. Thank you. Okay, I've got one end of the adjustable on the middle stanchion. Perfect, Josh. I'll connect the other to the speech fixture here in just a second. Okay, Zena, we are connected, adjustable to the middle station. 
Okay, nice work. All right, so just confirming you've got a adjustable from the H fixture to the middle stanchion? That's exactly right. And then the, uh, the TPA bag is to the Zima stanchion. Perfect. All right, and leave slack in that adjustable to avoid side loading. Got a couple of notes here about those Fairchild fasteners you're about to work with. Um, they uh, can release, of course. Um, the springs may protrude when you release them, creating a sharp edge, and we'll be using Bravo 7 here, which may cause bolt failure, so we'll be keeping an eye out for that. We'll have you prepare your small trash bag for possible FOD failure, FOD release from bolt failure, and let me know when you're ready for PGT settings. Okay, I'm getting set up, but I'll take those settings now and copy that uh, we broke up there a little bit, but uh, I remember what we talked about with the bolts and that they're possible to fail with this Bravo 7. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys are well studied. You've got all the words on the Fairchild fasteners. Also a reminder, the H fixture can release from the mounting plate with stored energy. Your PGT settings will be Bravo 7, counter 1. Okay, Bravo 7, counter 1, and I'll get that in work here shortly. And understand, order doesn't matter. That's exactly right. You'll be doing exactly one turn, any order. All right, then I have that right upper strut hand started to the bracket. I'm ready for the first uh, PGT settings on the silver PGT. Awesome, nice work, Frank. PGT will be Bravo 3, clockwise 2. Copy, Bravo 3, clockwise 2. Yeah, those are good settings, okay, Frank. And uh, four turns, correct? That's correct. Approximately four turns on M13 and M14. Currently seeing dual boxes, the helmet cams of EV1, Josh Cassida on your left, and Frank Rubio on your right. Both have a pistol grip tool in hand, preparing to do work. Currently, Cassida is going to be removing four bolts to remove the 1BH fixture needed for the mounting bracket for the future IROSA upgrades. And currently on the right, we see Frank Rubio, who has the strut bag in hand, where he is continuing to build out or put together, assemble some of those struts before they can install it to the 1B mass canister. Zena for uh, PKT. Okay, Josh. Yeah, yeah with you. So uh, the first half of the test worked, I got uh, Cal Pass. Then I went into motor, and uh, it would just quickly it would show something just for a split second and then go back to Cal Pass. Now, without hitting the trigger, I'm staring at LED test. The LEDs are illuminated. I'm going to cycle the power and try it again. Negative, don't cycle the power just yet. Roger. And Josh, that's actually a good config. Oh, without pull of the trigger. Copy. Oh, there's the battery voltage. Got it. Thank you. Perfect. Nice work, Josh. Okay, Bravo 7. Counterclockwise 1. That's a good setting. You're going exactly one turn on all four of those bolts in any order. Exactly one turn.
Vina on uh, Mike 17, uh, Lima 2. Uh, I'm going well past the engage line and trying to answer. They won't answer. So um, I'm going to try to use the PGT. Can I get those settings for the first turns? Yeah, absolutely. It'll be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Copy, Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Good words. And for M17, you'll be going six and a half to nine turns to torque. Looking for black line flush. I'll uh, ask for those again here shortly. Hold on. And Jeff, just checking, you've got one turn on all four of those bolts. I'm negative. We got one turn on the bottom right. Copy. One turn on bottom right. Thanks. You know, I have uh, exactly nine turns, green light, it looks like uh, 12 decimal zero. Copy, 12 decimal zero? Uh, actually, uh, uh, you know, correction, that would be a program torque, the actual torque is 11 decimal nine. Perfect, 11 decimal nine. Copy, and nine turns on M17. And just to confirm, black line is flush. It's flush all the way around. Okay, copy, Frank. You can release your RET from the right upper strut, and I'll have PGT settings for you next. You guys are both on Tom line doing a great job. Copy, thank you. Okay, and I am releasing the RET from the... Hey guys, sorry, short hand over there. Frank, I think I heard you say you're releasing your rep from the right upper. Affirmative. Okay, perfect. PGT settings for you next. Bravo three, clockwise two. Bravo three, clockwise two, copy. If you're just joining us, we're bringing you live coverage today of the 9th Spacewalk of 2022 and the 254th Spacewalk in support of International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. Bravo 3, clockwise 2, 
Uh, four turns for Mike 15 and 16. Yeah, AFIRM, once you get that alignment tab in the groove on the mounting bracket, approximately four turns on Mike 15. Okay, Zena, I got one turn on all four. Uh, didn't see it. Uh, they start uh, very slowly and then they give way. So it would kind of jump to the first half of the turn. Nice. Okay. Excellent work, Josh. That's great info. And we'll have new PGT settings for you if you're ready. I am ready. All right. This will be Alpha 6, counter 1. Alpha 6, counter 1. I got it. Zena, I have four turns on my 15 and my 16. Okay. Copy four turns on M15 and also M16. You'll be going to torque on M16, so now we're expecting about 20 turns, looking for black line flush, torque, and green lights. Okay, and settings. That'll be still Bravo 3, clockwise 2, same settings. Okay, Bravo 3, clockwise 2, Work on mic 16. Good copy. One turn on the upper right. I'll keep scouting. Copy, Josh. Then on my 16, I got 17 and a half turns, green light, 18 decimal four torque. Okay, 18 decimal four. Looks like that was also the pro on the torque. And yep, and that's the same for both program and actual. Copy. And 17 and a half turns on Mike 16. Did you get a green light? We were expecting two and a half and additional turns. Okay, copy. Yep, and that might have been. Um, when I hand started it, um, I probably put a full turn in there. Okay, copy, Frank. Is the black line flush? It is. Uh, completely all the way around. Okay, Frank, that's a good config on mic 16. Next, you'll be driving Mike 15 to torque, approximately 20 turns, black line flush. Okay. Two hours and nine minutes into today's EVA. Currently, we have EV1 Josh Cassida working on the H fixture removal at the 1B mess canister. And we have Frank Rubio has finished his first task, which was the 3A IROSA cable routing. Uh, 18 turns, green light, 18 decimal four torque, and black line is washed all the way around. Copy, 18 decimal four torque, 18 turns, green light, and black line flush on mic 15. You know, I recommend we don't do a full 11 if we don't need it. I can feel that it pops out usually right around eight. Copy, Josh, checking.
Okay, Josh, we're happy with that. If the bolts are popped out, definitely no need to go to 11. I'm ready for the next step. Okay, Frank, you can release your rep from the left upper strut. And next, you'll be torquing the right upper strut to the mounting bracket. I'll have PGT settings when you're ready. Okay, left upper strut, that is removed. Going to the right upper two brackets. Okay, I am uh, at my 13 and 14. Okay, perfect. Your PGT will be Bravo 3, clockwise 2. I see Bravo 3, clockwise 2. All right. You'll be going to torque on M13 and M14, approximately 20 turns, black line flush on both. Okay, good work. Okay, Zena, you know, I've got four that are popped out. I'm going to go ahead and stow the PGT. Copy. That sounds like a good plan. And we'll be ready for the wedges next. Copy. All right, Zena, you know, on mic uh, 13, I have 18 turns, green lights, 18 decimal four torque, and black line is flush all around. Okay, copy, 18.4 for the torque, 18 turns on mic 13. Uh, starting mic 14. You know, do you want me to try it without the wedges first? Yeah, you can try it by pulling on the tether point first. Oh, we need some wedges. Yeah, that is not unexpected. Sounds like a good plan, Josh. I've been on mic 14, uh, 17 turns, green light, 18 decimal four, uh, correction, 18 decimal two on the torque. Okay, copy, 18 decimal two torque. And, uh, black. 17 turns, green light, and is that black one flush? Yeah, it's all the way around. Perfect. Copy, Frank. Okay, Frank, we're happy with those bolts. You can install the pit pin from the upper left strut to the grounding block on the center pad. Copy and work. And I've got a good pit pin still intact with the uh, washer above the uh, detent. Perfect, Frank. Install the left upper strut MLI on the center pad covering the L2 clevis. Uh, copy. 
sorry, still working on the pip, and I was just saying that it's in good, good condition. Uh, good pull test. Okay, copy. That's a good config. Say again for next step, please. Stand by, Frank. I'm going to keep working on these wedges. You can see it in my... Yeah, we've got a sorry, my HECA. good view of it in your HECA, Josh. Um, reminder that you've also got the pliers if you need a little bit of extra leverage to get the wedges in place, but you're doing the right thing. Um, there's just not a lot of clearance here. Have we used the pliers before? A firm, we have. So you push the pliers in place of the wedges, or use the pliers to push the wedges? Use the pliers to push the wedges. That's what we'll have to do. Hey, Josh, we're seeing that those wedges are in place, so skip the pliers for now. You can go ahead and try tugging to see if the H fixture will come off, and if not, we can go to the combo wrench. Okay. I can give it a little bit of oops. 
Right. Just don't overdo it and don't sick, don't do it cyclically. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, if you're using the combo wrench, then yeah, don't don't pull too hard and wait a couple of wait a while in between removal attempts. Thirty seconds between. Right now, I'll start without the combo wrench. Is that right? Yeah, give it a try first. We currently have helmet cam views as Josh Cass of the EV-1 tries to free and remove the H fixture from the 1B mass canister. Okay, no problem. Okay, so you saw me pulling pretty good there. Um, she is not coming off. I'm happy to pull harder, but I don't know. I don't know if the combo wrench is going to pull harder than maybe it is, pull harder than I am. Yeah, copy, Josh. Let's go ahead and try the combo wrench just for some additional uh, mechanical advantage. Okay, talk me through that where you want it. The, the center pad, is that right? That target? Cassida has used its pistol grip tool to untighten and remove all four bolts, and now he will use the combo wrench to pry the H fixture away from the GSE pad or the ground support equipment pad. Vina, you copy the question about the combo wrench? Yeah, we do. Um, you're going to put it into the H fixture with the handle pointing away from the prying direction. Like that. Yeah, that looks good. And then you'll be prying away from the mass canister, away from the tether point. Right. It actually doesn't feel. Let's, uh, let's confirm that we're all happy with these bolts. These bolts are... Yeah, Josh, if they're all popped out, then we are happy with those bolts. We are now second-guessing what we uh, thought about the uh, wedges being fully in, so sorry about that. Maybe you do need to grab the pliers, and we'll try pushing them in a little further. Okay. You confirm that this is what you expect for a popped-out bolt. Happy to put more turns on these if you want. Can you poke them and do they go in and then pop back out with your finger? Yeah, about uh, about an eighth of an inch. Okay, copy. Yeah, that's a good config on those bolts, so let's go for the pliers.
after the combo wrench failed to release the H fixture. We're now moved on to the set of pliers, which will be used to push in the wedges further underneath the H fixture to release it from that GSE pad. Again, that's that ground support equipment pad. Hey Frank, when you've got a good moment, we can have you go ahead and move the silver PGT from the strut bag to the WIFX handrail and move the bag ret with the PGT. Okay, copy. Move the silver PGT uh, from here to the six under. Perfect. Yep. And use that ret for the WIFX handrail. Okay, copy. Um, I actually have it on the adjustable, so you want it on the ret? Yeah, bring the ret from the bag with the PGT as well as the adjustable, and then use the ret to the WIFX handrail. Okay. Great, Josh. Already used the tool backwards. Bill Rowe is going to get in there. Thank you. Nice uh, job, man. Thank we you. love to see it. <laughs> okay. Made a lot of us happy. Let's put some stuff away. And that was a successful removal of the H fixture on the 1B mass canister by Josh Cassida. He's now returning it along with some tools back into his ORU or his tool bag. From here, he will join EV2, which is Frank Rubio, to help finish the build out for the upper triangle for the modification kit for the 1B mass canister.
And hey, Josh, before you stow that H fixture, we will want some inspections. Inspection for the H fixture in the bag or just the plate? We do also want an inspection of the bolt on the H fixture. If you can press the bolts through the H fixture to reveal the threads, inspect for galling or stripping. All right. All right, here we go. Say hey. it again, Frank. Uh, uh, Zeno, what did you want holding the PGT to the uh, whiffix? Okay. Use the rep that was Work on good. the bag going to the PGT. Okay, but you want the adjustable to stay with us, right? Yep, A firm. All right, so I was able to put all four through, uh, no galling, uh, a little bit of the uh, gray material that we kind of expected. I think you're going to see that when I go over to the plate, just a couple of specs of it. Copy, Josh. And yeah, we'll also take an inspection of the GSE pad for FOD, making sure the insets are recessed relative to the GSE pad and that the threads are clear and undamaged. Okay. I think that um PGT is over on the Wiffick Center. Nice work, Brick. Thank you. And we'll have you uh, head back over and get ready with the upper triangle once Josh is in the APFR. Okay, no worries. Frank, just give me a minute to get cleaned up here, and then uh, and take a couple photos. Yep, no, uh, no, you got a task over there. Okay. Dina, how are we on timeline now after that? I'm I'm ready to the adjustable that's got the H fixture on it. I'm removing the H fixture adjustable. I'm actually going to put it right on the other point as the combo ridge. Nice. That sounds like a good plan, Josh. Now I'm taking my rep back. If you're just joining us, we're two hours and 35 minutes into the 254th spacewalk in support of the International Space Station Assembly, Maintenance, and Upgrades. EV-1, Josh Cassida has removed the 1BH fixture. So you want to make sure the bolts are not I'm sorry, the receptacles are not flush at the face of the pad, is that correct? Yeah, we want them recessed relative to the pad. Awesome, I'm four for four on that. Um, I've got Sweet. no evidence of galling, and I'll take a couple photos, but um, they, it looks pretty pristine here. That's great news. Yeah, we'll definitely take those photos. And then any of the MLI that you moved out of the way, just put it back before you clean up there. OK. 
Funny, I had moved. Um, there's a better view that you're looking for. Yeah, that looks great, Josh. I'm guessing your photo has been more fun than mine. My, my what? I'm sorry? Photos. Uh, you know, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to take too many. I took a few, but just enjoying the view, too. Which, let me know how I can help. Uh, I'm just going to snap a couple photos here yeah. if, I, if I can. You were, like, completely covered by the mass canisters. So I just haven't had a chance to get some pictures of you. And hey, Josh, one go back on that MLI. Um, there's kind of a thinner piece that goes between the larger MLI blankets that actually needs to go on top of the other MLI. That's the way I found it, correct? Yeah, correct. I'll get on it. All uh, right. We're going to take the photos first, so that's all right. Yeah, that's fine. I'm sorry, I'm looking right into the sun, so I can tell what kind of pictures I'm getting here. No problem. We've got a great view in your HECA. That is a beautiful rabbit, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the hacker. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Should do all of your farm animals. Again, if you're currently just joining us, you're, we are two hours and 40 minutes into today's spacewalk. Okay, I'm going to call that good. I did my best on the photos. Uh, I'm going to work on the MLI, and that should be pretty quick, Frank. You're good. That sounds awesome, Josh. I can help you in any way. Flight engineers Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio have ventured outside of the hatch today to perform, to assemble and install a modification kit for future IROSA upgrades. Both Josh and Frank have finished their first task today. Josh finished the removal of the H fixture. I was told I got to do a space walk with Frank. I haven't seen him today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Every time we uh, run into each other, it's, it's my time. All right. Uh, if you're happy with that, I'm going to uh, if I can fix here and then head back. Yeah. That sounds perfect. And Josh, you can go ahead and also pass the TBA bag off to Frank and head to the APFR. Happily. 
Alright, I'm ready for the TBA bag. I think I'm going to not tuck it behind my main workstation if everyone's okay with that. It just goes right in my face the whole time. <laughs> yeah, we see that. And Josh, I'll cheat for the uh, APFR to meet you there to grab the bag. Sounds great. After completion of the removal of the H fixture, Josh Castle is now heading back to the 1B mass canister to, to Frank Rubio, where he will hand off the build out of the upper triangle for this modification kit while in the articulating portable foot restraint Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio will install the upper triangle and the lower struts to the mass can the one B mass canister. Give me one second, I want to put my vocal down here. Yep, you're good. Okay, Frank. Send it your way just like in mode one. Okay, I there got you it. Go. Okay, and I see uh, this ingress aid looks secure. I see a wire tie. I'll try and run it to it if you want to uh, release your, or do you want me to release? Yeah, I'll get my red back if you don't mind. Uh, I got it. And then uh, just let me know when you're ready to catch it. I am ready. Okay. Your red is disconnected, coming back at you. Okay. Releasing. Great. Thank you. Yep. All right, Tina, I understand after all that I'm hopping in the APFR, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Frank can temp stow that TBA bag. You can hop in the APFR, and we'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check from all of you. Okay. And if I do that after the APFR? Yeah, no problem, Josh. Uh, you know, um, I have no changes on my right glove or my left glove. Long as they're both down, dry hop. Copy, Frank. This thing feels wobbly. I see black on black. I see black on black. Couple good pull twist tests. Pop it in. Copy, Josh. Checking. Not ready for maybe ingress? Josh, we're ready. You're go to ingress, and that's expected. We've seen similar before.
currently seeing great views of both astronauts. On the right hand side you see Josh Cassida, EV-1 in the suit with the red stripes. And on the left of your screen with the triangle build out, we see Frank Rubio in the unmarked suit. Josh Cassida is preparing to ingress the APFR or the articulating portable foot restraint. He um, will then use the pistol grip tool to install that upper triangle to the 1B mass canister. Watch your right foot then. Bring your left foot just slightly left. Hold on there. Give me one second. <laughs> Thank you though. Yep. I see he's not into that. Uh, yeah, I don't have a great view of your right. It looked like it was in, but it's just in the end toll hold. That's it. Like the orientation changed. Oh, just wobbly. Orientation changed.
Okay, thanks. I've got two in. Hi, good job. And can you visually see it as well? Um, I can definitely see you that your toes are in. I cannot see the back of your heels, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. just from the angle. But uh, earlier I could tell they were out, and right now it doesn't look like it. Sounds good. All right, sir. Nice job. Nice job, Josh. That's great news. And when you're ready, we can pass off that uh, upper triangle. I'm ready. Um, I think I might have gotten a notch or roll in there, or it's just really wobbly, but either way, I think I can still get it installed from this position. Are you passing it to me? Yep. Uh, it's coming up on your left hand. Okay. There you go. Upper. Let me know when you have the, uh, don't take it too far because I'll have to release. Uh, are we doing a rep shot? Um, well, no. if, you, if you think you can get it, um, it's just on the far corner closest to me. Yeah, it looks like you might be able to release with your left hand. It's the uh, large truck on the, you know, I don't remember a rep shot as part of this. Is that the plan? Negative on the rep swap for this. You on the APFR there, Frank? I'm not, but I, I have uh, control. Whenever you can release it, I can uh, control it. Okay. So you're not on the APFR right now? No, I'm not. I'm over by the bag. Okay, so it's, uh, it's your, you have the large hook right by you right there. So I can. The APFR? Yeah, almost, uh, almost like you're crawling on it. Uh, yep, it, it is wobbling, but it looks stable. Everything, all the connections that I can see look stable. Yes, copy. All right. And I'm in too close. Get this on. Is there, can we pick it? Zena and I understand I lead with the left side and roll on the right. That's correct. You'll engage the left side and then press in on the right side. I got an arrow up. I've got it engaged on the left. And I am not. And on the right. That should be pretty straightforward, is that right, Dina? That should be pretty straightforward. If you get the left engaged, then you can try kind of wiggling the right side up and down. Up and down? Okay. So I can do it. Oh, I see, because you're saying. Got it. Nice work. That's great. Okay, we'll have PGT right, settings for you, but first let's get a glove hap and gauntlet check from you. Okay, gloves. No changes to got a little orange on my left middle finger and my left index finger. That's it. Cap is still dry and gauntlets are still covered. Okay, copy that, Josh. And when you're ready, PGT will be alpha two, clockwise two. Alpha two, clockwise. After ingressing the APFR, that articulating portable foot restraint, Josh Cassida 
has received the upper triangle from Frank Rubio. He has now installed the center pad on the mass canister and he's now getting the PGT or that pistol grip tool configuration to tighten the bolts and into place for that upper triangle. And Josh, you can also start M5 through M8 two, by hand. Two. Perfect. You'll be going about two turns on each of those. So I got up five started by. I got M. Two more. Well, the total of two and a half now on M5. Right, I'm going to do my two turns. Uh, hey, Josh, you broke up a little bit there. We copied two turns on M5, and I didn't catch the second or third one. And Frank, for you, you'll be getting the left mid strut from straps 9 and 10 ready to pass off to Josh. Bobby, left mid strut. And uh, which end do I need to give him first? You'll be passing off the clevis end toward Josh. And Josh, I see you've got the PGT out. We haven't copied any of the turn counts on those bolts. We have two and a half on M5. We've got one on each of the others. So now I'm going to get it to a total of two. Okay, copy. Perfect. Thanks. Two and a half on M5, one on all the rest. Turn, turn, turn Here comes M8. There's two on M8. For a total of two. Copy. Total of two on M8. And Total two on M6. Copy, total two on M6. And total of seven. I'm sorry, total two on M7. Copy, total of two on M7. Next, you can drive those four bolts to torque. Five to ten turns total. Going to tor torque, I'm alpha two, alpha clockwise two still. Good settings. Turning turns on M5. Not sure why, but I think you keep this powered off. Quick handover coming up, guys. Copy, thanks. Copy, thank you. We're currently in a brief handover between satellites.
you're currently seeing. Point two. Zero decimal two on M5. I guess eight decimal two on M5. Eight decimal two, okay, that sounds better. Awesome. All right, certain turns on M8. And standby one, can we double check the PGT is still set at alpha two, clockwise two? Uh, my apologies, that's alpha six. That'll do it. Thanks for checking. Yeah, do you want me to back off uh, M5? Checking. If you want, I'll continue with M8 now. Okay, Josh, actually we do want you to back off of M5 and then we'll reset with the proper torque. Copy that. So, are you okay with, uh, what am I backing off with? Let's try Alpha 7, counterclockwise. Alpha 7, counterclockwise 2. Okay, it's backed off. Three quarters of a turn. Copy. Now I have Alpha 2, Clockwise 2. Perfect, good setting. Going on M5. All right. Three quarters of a turn now, back, and actual torque is 3.9. Copy, 3.9. Good. And a good green light there. Now going to M8, Alpha 2, clockwise 2. Copy, moving to M8. Four and a quarter turns, and actual torque of 3.6, good green light. Okay, copy. Two and a quarter turns, green light on M8. Here comes M6. One. Four and a half turns, good green light, and three decimal seven. Copy, three decimal seven on M6. M7, starting turns. One. Four and a quarter turns and three decimal six, good green light. Copy, two and a quarter, three decimal six on M7. Four and a quarter. Thank you, four and a quarter on M7. And stand by, Josh. We're just verifying that all of the bolts are good.
Hey, Josh, can you just verify if you remember how many turns you got on M5 at Alpha 6? We were tracking two and a quarter, and then you backed off three quarters and then went all the way in. Can you confirm? Uh, no. I, we started with two and a half, and then I believe it was, it was four and some change. I think it was four and a half. All right, Josh, we are happy with those bolts. With that, you can release the mounting bracket rack and check that the MLI and grounding pit pins remain in place on the upper triangle. Copy. That rat is down on the left. Yep, uh, down lower left corner. I don't know if I can get to it right now. It's a large small, yeah? Yep. And you're clear to release. Here it comes. Got it. All right. Yep. Thank you. Understand so socket swap for me, is that right? Nina? That's correct. And Josh, you can also rotate the upper triangle down or neutral for a later access. Moved with full test. Copy. Pull test on the two inch. Okay, copy. Good pull test on the two inch and confirm you've got the seven sixteenths in your trash bag.
In the trash bag. Standing by. Awesome. Nice work. Okay. Now you can egress the APFR. We'll be adjusting the WIFX extension. Okay, go, Josh, are you ready for the WIFX extension? This will be extension to one. Extension to one. Copy. If you're just joining us, we're three hours and 15 minutes into today's spacewalk, the 254th spacewalk in support of the International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. Josh Cassidy, EV-1 wearing the suit with the red stripes and Frank Rubio EV2 wearing an unmarked suit ventured outside of the hatch at 8.14 a.m. Central Time and have since completed their work preparation for their site work and they've also completed the H fixture removal at the 1B mass canister as well as Frank Rubio completing the 3A IROSA cable routing and the build out of the upper triangle. Josh Cassidy has now installed, with four boats, has installed the upper triangle to the 1B mass canister. He has egressed the APFR, the articulating portable foot restraint, and now is extending that working, that work site. He is now extending that worksite interface fixture extension after the extension is modified he will ingress the APFR again and, and receive the left mid strut from Frank Rubio for its installation to the upper triangle and to the mass canister. Okay, roll will be Papa Papa, or sorry, pitch is Papa Papa, and roll will be Hotel. Okay, Papa Papa on the APSR.
same deal. Can't get the uh, pitch knob to uh, really move, but it is off, and I can't get it to change pitch. So that's Papa Papa. I understand roll of hotel. Copy on the pitch and a firm roll of hotel. Roll of hotel. Okay, Mac. Want me to ingress the APFR, is that right? A firm, you can ingress the APFR, tuck that ingress aid, and then Frank, you'll get ready to pass off the mid strut first and then the left lower. Copy. Right field, or is the left field solid? I'm going to do the right again unless you can see it. Thanks. Uh, your left is in. Just bring, it, bring your heel further outward. Like, yep, perfect. Now it's in. I think the right needs to be real dead. That's what I was saying, sir. Uh, your left or your right heel is still on top of the box. Yeah. A further inboard. Oh. Go on, keep going, drop it down. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Okay, I'm standing by with a RET, and do you have words for us, Dina? Okay, if you're ready with that RET, then Frank can pass off the left mid strut. And Josh, you'll want a RET to the stanchion that's nearest the side pad. Copy. I think... I think you're passing me the you need to pass me the side pad. Is that is that right, Tina? At the closet end? Okay. 
Because then once it's installed, you'll release my rent. Uh, yep. Um, yeah, I asked previously. She said the Clavis, but it might have been a... Yeah, sorry about that. Actually, here. I think that's the clevis on the left lower. I must have jumped ahead. You'll want to pass off the left mid strut, and then Josh will ret to the stanchion nearest the side pad. And then for the left Is lower. Yeah, ret to the stanchion nearest the side pad on the left mid. Okay. I'm ready to it. Okay. If you can release my rut, I will. Give me one second. All right. All right. Here comes your rep. Okay. Can you unlock it? It looks like it locked out. Have control. Okay, here it comes. Thank you. Go. Nice work, guys. Josh, you can stow that mid strut on your BRT, and then Frank will pass off the left lower with the clevis end toward Josh. Copy. And then I'm ready nearest the clevis end. Hey, from Josh. It's just making it hard. Hmm. Nina, would I be able to reach it if I went to the other expansion? The uh, wire tie that's on here is uh, keeping me from being able to get this rep closed. Checking. And yes, a firm. It, too late, I got it closed. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm redded, and you can release your red if that's what's next. Is that what's next, Dina? That is indeed what's next. The uh, back rut is released. You have the strut. I have the strut. All right, nice work. Frank, you'll translate to the left sob spherical bearing on the left side of the mast canister. And then Josh, you'll be assisting Frank with the lower strut positioning.
that might be a left bubble. Beautiful. If you could give us a report of the spherical bearing alignment, and then also a reminder, keep your fingers clear of that pinch point once you're driving the bolt. Yeah, the uh, spherical bearing looks perfectly centered on the boss. Uh, no, no abnormalities noted on the but. Okay, copy. That's great. You can go ahead and get the silver PGT ready and staged for you. I'll have PGT settings, and then you'll be driving M21. If you're just joining us, we're three hours and 30 minutes into today's spacewalk, the 254th spacewalk in assembly, maintenance, and upgrades for the International Space Station. NASA flight surgeons Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio are currently at the 1B mass canister installing the lower left strut after They've fixed the upper triangle to the 1B mass canister. Frank Rubio will use the pistol grip tool this time to drive Bolt M21. It's engaged. Josh, if you can rotate clockwise 10 more degrees. That's at a hard, hard stop there. Oh, is it? Okay. Zeta EV1 is now at 5 on the cooling. Copy 5 on your TCV. Thanks, Josh. Alright, Dean, I'm ready for those settings on the uh, solar PGT. Okay, nice work. That'll be Alpha 1, Clockwise 1. Alpha 1, Clockwise 1. Zena, give me a second. My uh, my fingers to uh, keeps turning it off, and I'm trying to turn it off. So just needed the cow again. Those personal front of yours experienced that yeah. earlier. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll take those settings again, please. That'll be Alpha One, Clockwise One. Alpha one, clockwise one. Copy. 
Josh, we'll also have some PGT settings for you whenever you're ready. This will be for M22 after Frank gets M21 started. Okay. I'm ready to copy. I'm not going to set them right now, though, if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. I'll just let you know whenever you're ready to set them. Okay. You've been how many turns? This will be approximately four turns on M21, and let us know if you got any hand turns, hand start on that. Uh, yep, I, I think I got about a half turn. Okay, copy. So expecting about three and a half additional turns on M21. Okay, good work. Real quick, Frank, do you want me to, Zena, do you want me to align this with the uh, with the upper triangle, or just hold it in position for? Hold it in position for now. Once Frank gets that bolt started, then you can align the lower strut with the mounting bracket and check the pit pin lanyard is free of the clevis. Okay, I have three and a half turns. Copy, three and a half turns. Okay, so Josh, you can go ahead and align that mounting bracket strut. And Frank, for you, your next PGT settings will be Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Bravo 7, clockwise 2, copy. Okay, M22 is started, M started. Copy. Do you have an estimate how many turns you got on M22? Uh, it kept popping out on me. Um, I think uh, once I finally got it in there, it's probably uh, one and a half. Okay, copy one and a half turns on M22. Frank, you can go ahead and continue with M22, driving it to torque now with that Bravo 7 setting, 10 and a half to 11 turns, looking for good torque and green lights. Okay, and uh, verify it's M21. Hey, firm, M21, good correction. And then Josh, for you, on M22, you will be using your PGT at Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Bravo 1, clockwise 2, and understand that, do you need me to wait or go now? Checking. You know, um, my PGT was not turning, it's got a red fault light that says caller error. Checking, Frank. You may need to realign the collar on the PGT and just make sure all of the settings are fully in the correct position. Okay. You still stand by on turns for M22, correct? And Josh, we'll have you stand by on M22 until Frank has M21 torqued. Okay. That looks good. Thank you. Zeno, I think the uh, clockwise two was not fully in the detail. Copy, Frank. Good catch. And uh, 
A fair number of turns again, please. Ten and a half to eleven turns on M21. Okay, I got uh, three turns, um, three and a half turns, and then got a false torque that says low torque. I think I just need to reposition, maybe. Yeah, A firm, Frank, if you can uh, reposition your body and try hitting it again. Yeah, that'll probably be seven additional turns, Frank. And Frank, if you don't get there all the way with the PGT, that's fine. You'll be going the rest of the way with the torque wrench. the low torque. Frank, you were broken on your last call. Did you get low torque again? Uh, actually, I thought I did, but actually it did not. It actually gave me green light, uh, torque of 25 decimal four, and I'm at approximately uh, six, six turns. Happy Frank, and just confirming that was six additional turns on top of the three and a half you got before. Um, no, negative. That's uh, that was about six total turns. Okay. Copy, Frank. We'll have you retrieve the torque wrench from the left lower strut handrail, Frank, and socket swap the two inch from the silver PGT. Copy that, it works.
if you're just joining us, we're three hours and 45 minutes into the 254th spacewalk in support of the International Space Station Assembly maintenance and upgrades. NASA astronauts Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio exit the hatch this morning, venturing out into the vacuum of space at 8.14 a.m. Central Time, 9.14 a.m. Eastern Time. The duo have been completing tasks this morning on their <coughs> completing tasks this morning to assemble and install brackets and struts and as a part of a modification kit for upcoming solar array upgrades. The new ISS rollout solar arrays, or IROSAs, will increase the space station's total available power. I do not have the uh, pocket part complete on the uh, tour range. Awesome, and just confirm good pull test, and after that you can tend the silver PGT back to the WIFX handrail. I think I saw you do that already. Yep. This is set to 64 pounds. Yeah, it'll be 60 foot pounds on the torque wrench. You're going until the wrench breaks over two times and just report any additional turns that you put on the bolt. Okay, copy that. We're expecting about four and a half additional turns. Just let us know. Okay, yeah, all right. My uh, confidence in my turn count in my previous one is a little broken just because it kept it kept popping on me, so I'm Yeah, I totally understand. Be advised of that. So far today, Josh Josh Cassida, E V one or the astronaut in the suit with the red stripes, has completed the removal or H fixture on the one B mass canister and Frank Rubio has routed 3A IROSA cables. Frank Rubio also built out the upper triangle where Josh Cassida has now installed it. The duo is currently working on the left struts, uh, working on the installation of the, work, the left struts. And after the completion of the left struts, the duo will begin on the right side, on the right struts. Uh, you know, I have uh, two pops, and that felt like about four turns. The uh, black line is flush, and looking at the vehicle bearing and the pad boss, I see good contact all the way around with no gap. We copy black line and no gap between boss and bearing. If you can do a wiggle test as well, looking for no motion. Copy. Wiggle in work. That seems super solid. Copy. Good wiggle test. Okay, Josh, we're ready for you. This will be five to seven turns on M22. Looking for black line flush. Five to seven turns. I've got Bravo one, clockwise two, on M22. That's a good copy. Also, Easy One's TVC is now set to four. Copy four on your TCV.
a seven and a half turn, good green light, 11.9 torque. Copy, 11.9 on the torque, seven and a half turns and green light. Checking for a black line flush. Black line is flush. Copy, Josh. We're checking on that bolt real quick. Okay, those are good numbers on that bolt. Josh, you can stow your PGT and release the ret from the lower strut. Frank, for you, you can check that the MLI is fully covering the lower strut pad and retrieve the silver PGT and do a socket swap back to the PGT from the torque wrench. Good work on the MLI. Josh, for you, once you've got your PGT stowed, you can release the RET from the lower strut and install the grounding pit pin. If those two things are done, I'm installing the grounding pit pin now. Copy. Pit pin is installed. Copy, nice work. You can install the lower strut MLI around the clevis. Right, MLI is coming. And Frank, once you've got that socket swap, we're looking for a good pull test, and then you'll be moving the torque wrench, attaching it to the silver PGT, and keeping the ret with the torque wrench. Copy. <clears throat> and I'm sorry, I'll be moving the torque wrench to where? Just attach it to the silver PGT. Okay, copy. Now in three hours and 55 minutes into today's spacewalk, recapping some of the milestones of today. At 8.14 a.m. Central Time, Cassidy and Rubio turned their suits on to battery power, marking the official start of today's spacewalk. Okay, okay. Copy, Josh. That's a good config. 
Next, retrieve the left mid strut from your BRT and release the locking pit pin from the mid strut opposite the handrail. All right, so that pit pin's already out. Perfect, and just check that the pit pin washer is inside the ball detent. Then you can extend the mid strut with the side pad toward Frank once he gets up to the side pad location. Okay, and we're also not going to be able to check that washer until we uh, tuck it away um, safely inside. I think we already discussed that, so. Yeah, copy, Josh. We concur. After exiting the hatch, the duo have since completed a 3A IROSA cable routing, H fixture removal. They've built out the upper triangle for the 1B mass canister. They've attached the upper triangle to the mass canister. They have installed the, they're actively installing the left struts and will begin working on the right struts shortly. Again, Again, this is the duo installing the 1B modification kit or support, support structures. The completion of this kit will ensure future solar array upgrades. The new solar arrays or IROSAs, which is the ISS rollout solar arrays, which are set to be delivered at a sp to the space station on an upcoming SpaceX commercial resupply mission are a larger version of the rollout solar arrays or the ROSA technology and will ultimately increase the station's total available power from 160 kilowatts up to 215 kilowatts. The uh, 58 is on the silver PGT. I had a good pull test, and now the torque wrench is attached to the silver PGT. Okay, copy. And just tend that PGT over to somewhere where future Frank will be able to reach it, and then we'll have you translate up to the left side pad installation okay. location. Copy that. Another important thing happening today, the Tengen for NASA Space Launch System rocket with the Orion spacecraft at Launch Pad 39B. Here's a view at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. At 2.30 p.m. Central Time, we're gonna split channels out, enabling KSE to begin broadcasting fueling coverage on the public channel while we finish the EVA coverage on the media channel. NASA's Artemis 1 mission is the first integrated test of the agency's deep space exploration system, the Orion spacecraft, SLS rocket, and the ground systems. Launch of the uncrewed flight test is targeted for November 16th at 1.04 a.m. Eastern Time.
I mean, I have the uh, thigh pad, and I believe I the uh, inboard side first and then rotate in the outboard side. That's exactly correct, Frank. You'll do the right side first and then press in on the left side to engage that soft dock. Let me know if I can help. Yeah, I could probably swing it once you get the right side in. I could swing my I am station forward. I try that. There you go. Perfect. Great. Nice job. Great. Nice work, guys. Frank, we'll have... Uh, you know, it looks like it's uh, soft dogs engaged. Perfect. I've got PGT settings for you when you're ready. Well, he's getting set up. Can I hand start or try to hand start M28? Negative, Josh. We can give you PGT settings, but you will be able to hand start those once your time comes, but we do need turns on Frank's M1 through M4 first. No problem. Thanks. You know, I'm ready for settings for the five time. Frank, it's Alpha 2, clockwise 2. Alpha 2, clockwise This is only uh, four turns. This will be two turns on M1 through M4. Two turns. Copy. Starting with M2. Cooley now set at three for EV1. Copy three on your TCV. Yeah, it was two turns on M2. Copy, two on two. Two turns on M3. Copy two on three. Two on one. Copy two on one. And two on four. Copy two turns on M4. Frank, there will be no changes to your PGT settings. You'll be going three to eight and a half additional turns to torque on M1 through M4. Josh, for you, you'll be driving M28 to torque, six and a half to nine turns. You can hand start it. Let me know when you're ready for PGT. Okay, copy, Dana, no changes. Got three to eight turns. Do you want me to wait till Josh gets engaged? Or start? I think that's a good plan. Josh, you're about a half an inch to a quarter inch from the engagement line. Yeah, I'm not sure. The hole yet? 
very much. We don't know. Yeah, got it. Right. So, just like in the pool, right? Yeah, yeah. Can right. you see it? On, you can see it on top. Uh, uh, I like the moral support. <laughs> Especially like, when it pops out. We can both be dejected together. <laughs> been there. Golly. You guys are doing great. It looks like you're in JD. I'm not sure. Can you push a little bit further? Can you push up a little bit? There you go. It looks like it's... I know, I know. Please don't. Nice. No, I maybe hit it. Either would you let me hit it with the PGT just to get you know, the half a turn on it? Yeah, absolutely. So that you can doesn't pop out again? You can start with the PGT. Okay. It'll be Bravo 1, Clockwise 2. Bravo 1, Clockwise 2. And then I'm going to let him get a, at least a turn or two in before I start. Copy, Frank. We'll be going to torque with this once you get it engaged, six and a half to nine turns. Uh, no, it didn't. Okay, six and a half to nine turns to torque. Starting turns. There's one. Okay, so I've got one turn on there. Um, Frank, are you okay with me going to torque, or do you want to get yours? Yeah, no, I, I think mine are all engaged, so I'll start. Josh, you'll be going six and a half to nine turns total, straight to torque. All right, Dina, on uh, M2, I got three light, three decimal one torque, uh, four turns. Three decimal one on the torque, four turns, green light on M2, copy. On M3. Eight and a quarter turns on M28, good green light. And good torque of 11.9. Copy, 11.9 on the torque, three and a quarter turns, and a green light. Was that three and a quarter additional turns? It was eight. If I said three, I meant eight and a quarter turns. Copy. And that was additional to the, about the one that it took for me to get it started. Maybe Perfect. just less than one. Great. And looking for black line flush. And the black line is push. You know, on bike three, I have green light, three decimal one on the torque, four and a half turns. Copy, three decimal one torque, four and a half turns, green light on M3. And Josh, copy black line flush. You okay with the grounding step going in? Josh, you are good on M28. Yeah, you can pin. stow your PGT and, yes, install that pit pin into the grounding block. Okay, pit pin is installed, PGT is stowed. Perfect. We'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check from you. Okay. Zeno, you know, mic one was uh, green light, three decimal one, four turns. Copy. Four and a quarter, actually. Copy four and a quarter turns, three decimal one torque, green light on M1. And for EV1, uh, no further changes to the gloves, and gauntlets are covered and half is dry. Copy all, Josh. You can egress the APFR, and you'll be changing the roll in order to reach the right side. Okay. I think first I'm going to grab my rep. Uh, so when you, if you're good with it, you know, I'll have uh, Frank release my rep. Yep. Can do that. Stand by.
Yes, Josh, you can release the RET from the lower strip. Uh, no, I'm sorry, my CRT sorry, RET is above the mid strip. strip. Yes, AFIRM. All right, Frank, if you could dip and then back my way. Here for uh, Mike 4, it was uh, 3 decimal 1, green light, and 5 and a smidgen turns. Got me. 3 decimal 1 on the torque, 5 and a smidgen turns, and green light on M4. Okay, Frank, those are four good bolts. You can stow your PGT. And Josh, I think, is cleaning up the RET. Frank, you can check that the grounding pit pin is still in the grounding block and that the MLI is fully installed over the side pad clevis. Okay, give me one second. Working on uh, Josh's uh Ready for it? All right, ready. All right, let me go. You know, you said the uh, MLI over the side pad, correct? That's right, MLI over the side pad clevis. Okay, MLI is over the side pad clevis on the left. Copy, Frank. We'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check from you as well, and we also want you to stay where you are. We're talking some big picture stuff for the timeline here. Okay, copy that. And also, does the locking fan need to go in? Or not yet? Checking. And Zena, do you still want me to egress the APSR and uh, rotate over to the right side? Let's just have you stand by, Josh, and Frank, negative on that pit pin. Okay, Frank and Josh, we've got some big picture words for you here. Looking at the timeline, we are a bit down on the day, about an hour, just with all the hardware troubleshooting. So our forward plan is we're not going to do any collar bolts today. We're going to cover up the left mid strut with the MLI, get those wire ties in place, head over, install the right struts, install but don't tighten the collar bolts on the right mid, and then we'll be skipping cable routing on this channel. Okay, copy. 
packaging. And so right now you want this MOI covering uh, the left mid strut, correct? That's correct. Yeah, we'll do the left mid strut MOI and install the wire ties on that left mid strut MOI. And Frank, we do also want to install all of the grounding pit pins on the right side before you cover it up with the MLI. Uh, on the left side? A-firm on the left side. Yeah, all the grounding pit pins and, and that, that locking pit locking. pin. Okay, copy that. You know, is, is the uh, handrail on the left mid strut now considered a good point for a safety tether for a um, local? Checking. And Dina, while you're checking on that, when you say all of the pit pins, the grounding pit pins, they're all installed right now, correct? Except for the locking the pin that Frank's going to get to? A firm, that should be the case, yes. Yeah, Josh, that'll be on the left side. All of the pit pins should be installed, and then we are installing the locking pit pin as well. Sounds great. That's what we're tracking as well. And on that left mid strut handrail. Left. Go ahead, Frank. Uh, left locking pit pin is in. Copy, locking pit pin is in. I actually, uh, I left my local. I didn't think I could reach, but I, I can reach based off the um, okay. canister long rail. Copy. So That's a good, good config, uh, but you can actually local to that left mid strut handrail. Just translate gently on it. Thank you. And Josh, for you, you can egress the APFR. You'll be rolling it to reach the right side. This will be roll to Charlie. Do you want to finish the MLI here on the left side first or roll to Charlie now? Yeah, if you can be helpful to Frank in finishing that MLI A firm. Let's do that. All right. Copy that. When we have the MLI, Quick we'll let you know here. and then I'll get out. There's some words about tacking it down on M28 first. Is that correct? Yep. Very good. Nice. Got it. Got it. We're currently in a brief handover between satellites, but we'll be back with views of the EVA just shortly. NASA flight engineers Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio have completed the installation at the upper right the upper triangle and the left struts for the 1B modification kit. Ground IV Zena Cartman just relayed to the crew the big picture that she was hearing from EVA officers here in the room. The duo will not do any collar bolts, but instead will make sure that the MLI or that multi-layer insulation and wire ties are installed on the mid strut on the left side, and they will finish bolt. They will bolt in the right strut as well. Again, they will not install any collar bolts, and this is due to about one hour being needed for that right strut to be installed and about an hour and a half needed to clean up and get back to the airlock. You think so? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so 
I'll get um, and Venus just to verify. Both will go on the thin part of the uh, med strut. One will go closer to the uh, collar, and the other one will go closer to the uh, jacket. Correct. Hey, from Frank. That's true. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I got it, Josh. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Change your mind. Let me know here in the next 30 seconds, because okay. I can get that one uh, here. Um, so if it's easy for you, it'd be great. Okay. But if it's not, Zeta, you know, we're going to have me stay and put on a wire tie, unless you think uh, the next iteration is going to take too long of uh, region the APFR. No, I like that plan, Josh. Okay, three twists near the clevis. I saw uh, Frank did the same there, so I'm going to move out. Thanks, Josh. Oh, no problem. All right, then Two more LOS. Oh. We're with you. Hey, Frank. If we could actually get a quick glove happen gauntlet check from you, EV2, and you also have a cable sticking out uh, above your right gauntlet, if you can just tuck that back in the TMG. It's kind of up at your elbow, yeah, actually. Out above my right gauntlet? Yeah. Between your right gauntlet and your elbow. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep, you got it. And then what was the first part you thought about the... Uh... We'll take a glove half and gauntlet check. We see your gauntlets are still in place. So glove and half. Okay, copy that. Okay, no changes for my right glove, no changes for my left glove, and dry hop, EV2. Copy, EV2. Then am I going back to the bag? Affirm, next steps will be getting the right mid strut. That straps 12 and 13, ready to pass off to Josh.
Well, <laughs> this uh, camera did become a problem. I thought it wouldn't. Head again. Camera just uh, tangled. Oh, yeah, it got mine got tangled earlier, too. Unfortunately, mine goes through. It somehow slipped past uh, my anchor for my waist tether. But it is actually the waist tether. Let's see. Okay. It's easy enough for me to go over. You want to know? Um, I don't think. Well, not yet. Okay. Um. No, no problem. I'm here at the back, so it's easy. Now four hours and 29 minutes into today's spacewalk, recapping some of the milestones of today. At 8.14 a.m. Central Time, NASA astronauts Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio turned their suits on to battery power, marking the official start of today's spacewalk. They are currently working on the starboard six truss at the 1B power channel. So far, the duo have completed and the 3A IROSA cable routing the removal of an H fixture, the build out of the 1B upper triangle, the 1B upper triangle installation to the 1B mass canister. They have also installed the 1B left struts and the duo are currently in the process of installing the 1B right struts. Okay, Frank. Again, this modification kit is the support structures needed for the future IROSA or ISS rollout solar arrays and their upgrades. Hey Frank, can you give me some essay on my First of all, this camera is locked out, I think. It's a real problem right now. Yeah, here, I'll just come over and I'll write through it and then you can just unclip it. And that way, uh, I think it'll be easier to...
I think it caused two problems. One, I've locked this one down just in case I need to. This is my left. My right is here. You see how the, yep, the rat went through it? I don't know how it slipped past there being locked, but it did. Josh, if it helps, you can offload that camera, put it on a ret to the bag, to the strut bag, and then release the other end of the ret from your camera. You might do that. Thank you. Give me one second here. I almost got this part. I'm done. And Frank, you can also do that from your end if, if that's easier than Josh doing it. Yeah, somehow I went through your uh, waist tether. Right. So I am locked, black on black, on my left waist tether. So I'm happy to tether. Okay, uh, hold on. This uh, anchor's not. Now it's uh, black on black on your demon extender. Come. Okay. Okay, give me one second. That's your right. That's your left. If I have left, is anchored well? Yep. It is. Uh, nope. So, uh, yes, my left is anchored here. Okay, great. And gate is... Oh, it's left. Coming up down on this one? Okay. And I still see your red hook. Uh, gate close, hook lock, lock, I'm back. And it is in a weird... I have the camera, awesome. and it is off completely. It is on my back. I think that the Okay, hold that for one second if you would. Now, right, right D-ring extender, we'll put this back on there, um, yep. making, making sure that the waist tether, or the safety tether is a good config. And the guy is on the right side. And yeah, it's, uh, no, hold on. Let's put it over here. Okay, this safety tether is now gate close, hook lock, lock on block. And you mean that waist tether? Yes. Right? This one right here. Yep. And then this one is your anchor, uh, your red hook. Yep. And uh, sorry, hold on, hold on. Right. This one goes 
straight over there. This, this one. Okay, call us to o'clock, back on back. Perfect. I'm going to undo this one now. Is that what's holding us? Everybody up? Now. Just a camera rep going through that clip. Got it. Yeah, man. Really appreciate it. All right, Nina. Where to get to Greg and head it over to Charlie. Copy. And can you just make sure that all of the small hooks on Josh's D ring extender are locked block on block? Let me verify that. Any of those waist tether hooks that you just see, yeah. changed up there? Left waist tether is gate close, slide lock, lock on black. And right is close, slide lock, black on black. And red hook, gate close, slide lock, black on black. Perfect. Thanks, guys. I'm going to give you this. So, here you go, Josh. And then the, um, the camera, I'm just going to put in one of the bags, you know, in a front bag. Sure, that's fine. I think that's a good plan, Frank. Okay, roll is Charlie. Frank, if you're good, I'm going to go ahead and ingress. Hey, I'm, uh, no, of course, I need some help. Okay. Uh, my safety tether, I'm not confident that it's not going around my legs. Can you just verify? It is not. So go ahead and swing your body uh, station forward. Okay. Where it is, is it going around your PGT? It feels yeah. like it's pulling on something. So if you'll swing back to your left, I can talk you through it. There we go. Thank you. Yep. You good with me and grab some here? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. If you're just joining us, we're four hours and 42 minutes into today's spacewalk. Expedition 68 flight engineers Josh Cassida 
and Frank Rubio of NASA began a spacewalk at 8.14 a.m. Central Time to assemble a mounting bracket on the starboard side of the station's truss assembly in preparation for the installation of a pair of International Space Station rollout solar arrays on the space station. CASADA designated extravehicular crew member one, or EV-1, is wearing the suit with the red stripes. Frank Rubio designated EV-2, or extravehicular crew member number two, is in an unmarked suit. The duo have completed the... Here in Shirley. Copy. And I have the uh, mid start ready for you. Copy. Okay, I've got a rat ready for that uh, iPad. Okay. I guess if necessary, you could telescope it out. Yeah. I could just collapse it back in. You're much uh, further away. i got to reposition it. Oh, Zeta. Was I supposed to put that on before the ingress? I think we might have missed a step there. Are you back in the APFR? I am. Okay. Yeah, it might be tricky to hand off the right mid strut. Let's see if you can reach, and otherwise we'll have you egress. Okay. I'm going to egress. Do you agree, Frank? Uh, maybe I can bring it to you. Give me a second. You know what I've got a red on it. Okay, copy that. Did you guys get it passed off? Uh, yeah, just waiting on right. Nice work, guys. All right, I am ready. Okay. And if you want, I'll release together. Yeah, if you could, that'd be great. Here comes your right. Got it.
now four hours and 47 minutes into today's EVA. The duo of Josh Cassida, EV1, and Frank Ribio, EV2, have completed several tasks on their test EVA task list, including the 3A IROSA cable routing. They've removed the H fixture from the 1B mass canister. They've also built out the upper triangle for the 1B and installed it to the 1B mass canister. They've also installed the 1B left struts and they are currently working on the right struts. The crew is about 50 minutes behind their normal timeline due to troubleshooting earlier in the morning. Getting in the right position. Okay, no problem. Yep. The team is expecting to have time for the right struts. Again, the Tim is expecting to have time for the but expect the collars and the collar bolts and the 1B cable routing to fall off the timeline today. This is due to cleanup and ingress requiring one hour and 25 minutes, and a team will protect the time prior to the end of consumables. Josh, coming out your left hand. Sounds good. I'll let you know when I've got a red on it. Okay. Um, you're going to notice that my legs just go over either side of my waist tether. So that means my safety tether is just going right between them. But straight back to the uh, center lead point. Yep, that's affirmative. The red are good while you're in the AP fall, but oh yeah, when you come out, you'll. Uh, I agree. Yep, we'll get it uh, on the right side. Okay, I am ready. So you can go ahead and release your rep. Okay. Coming up here. Okay. Grab the strut. I have the strut. Okay, nice work. Once you've got that rep released. Frank, you can translate to the Saab spherical bearing on the right side. Okay, copy that. Thank you.
and uh, Zeno, this vehicle bearing also looks well aligned. Uh, no abnormalities noted. Copy, Frank. That sounds great. You can get the silver PGT from that WIFX handrail, and you'll be installing the right lower strut M19 to that Saab spherical bearing. Just let us know how many hand turns you get, and we'll be ready with PGT settings. Alright, dude, I'm ready for those, uh, go on. Alright, sure, I'm ready to hand start. Okay. I'm gonna guide this down to the south. Alright, sure. Let's go. I'll try to keep it clear of your 12 there. Okay, thank you. Now I've got it here. Alright, you let me know if you need any clock work or rotation. Um, I need a little bit of pitch down, which would be away from you. And towards the mass canister. Alright, pitch down which would be away from you and towards the mass canister. Like this? Yep, keep going. Keep going. Perfect. I'll try to hold it right there for you. If it doesn't move. Thank you. Do it. I'm going to have to use the PGT. All right, Dean, I'm ready for the settings. Okay, Frank, Alpha 1, 
clockwise one, and you'll be going about four turns. Bravo one, clockwise one. Alpha one, alpha one. Alpha one, copy. Feels like it's <laughs> I know. If I hold it away, can you push through so you can see it? Okay, let me hold it. You push. See if that helps you. Oh my god, I got a better body position here. About this will help me keep it stable for you. More stable. Okay, come away from the crowd a little bit. Perfect. Oh, give it up, Jeff. Whatever you need to weigh again. Okay, Ben, I just need a gauge in there. Engaged. I agree. Then I got a one and a half turns. Copy. One turn on M19. One uh, decimal correct. five. Correct. Between one and one and a half. <laughs> Copy. Okay. Thanks, Frank. All right. We're looking for about four turns to start with, and then we'll be bumping up to Bravo 7. Josh, you can go ahead and start M20 on your end. Check that the pit pin lanyard is free of the clevis. Thank you. Now five hours and two minutes into today's spacewalk, recapping some of the milestones of today at 8.14 a.m. Central Time, NASA astronauts Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio turned their suits onto battery power, marking the official start of today's spacewalk. They are currently working on the installation of the lower right struts for the modification kit to the 1B power channel. modification kit is the support structures needed for the future IROSA or ISS rollout solar array upgrades.
Copy one turn, Josh, and I am coming up on four turns there. Copy, Frank. You know, I have four turns. Copy four turns on M19. And Josh, once you've got M20 in place, let me know when you're ready for PGT. We've got one turn on M20. I'm ready for PGT. Copy one turn on M20. It'll be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Looking for one additional turn, roughly, on M20 for now. All right, doing just one additional turn. That'll be Bravo. Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Good Is copy, right? Josh. A firm. Frank, for you. Now that he's got one turn on M20, you can drive M19 to torque, 10 and a half to 11 additional turns, looking for green light. Okay, and Freddy? And Bravo 7 on the PGT. Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Bravo 7, clockwise 2, copy. I go on one turn. On M20, one additional turn. Copy, two total turns on M20. And stand by one until Frank gets his bolt torqued. I already have two total on M20. Yep, we copy, concur. And just stand by until Frank gets his bolt torqued. Okay. All right, then I had seven turns. Frank, you broke up there. We copied seven turns. Nothing after that. Uh, green light, 25 decimal four torque. Copy, 25 decimal four, seven turns, green light on M20. And you can go ahead and uh, retrieve the torque wrench, do a socket swap from the silver PGT to the torque wrench with a good pull test. Hey, copy. Now in the orbital daytime, getting great views of the Earth below. Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio continue to install the lower right strut to the mass canister for the 1B power channel.
Uh, Jenna has three additional turns. Hit break over uh, twice. And black line is flush. And I see no gap between the either boss and the spherical bearing. Copy. We'll take a wiggle test. It seems very solid. Copy. That's a good config. Josh, you can finish driving M20 to torque five to seven additional turns. And Frank, for you, you can tend can that say. torque wrench back to the PGT. Okay. They are tended and they are on the APFR. Five to seven additional turns. Here they come. Frank, next you can also check the lower strut MLI is covering the strut pad. MLI is in a good config. So six turns, good green light, good torque at 11.8. Copy, Josh. And looking for black line flush as well for you. And black line is flush. You copy black line stuff? Hey, from Josh, that's a good bolt on M20. You can stow your PGT and release the ret from the lower strut. Okay, it worked. And I'm taking my ret back. Copy, Josh. And big picture for you both. We're going to be installing the right mid strut and then cleaning up. Copy that. Vanna, should I move up to the uh, side pad install location? Yeah, A from Frank, you can translate up to the right side pad. Okay, in route. Ready, Frank? Yes, sir. Here it comes. And you heard a call from ground IP, NASA astronaut Zena Cartman. After the mid strut installation, the duo will clean up and head back to the airlock, finishing today's EVA after repress and helmet donning. Dolphin after helmet doffing. Okay, I think it's in place if you want to rotate out. Okay, same trick. Yep, perfect, engaged. Nice, nice job. Good. Great work, guys. Frank, All right, Dana, the, uh, I'll have some PGT for engaged. you. Copy. And Josh, just want to make sure that you have the lower strut grounding pit pin into the block on the mounting bracket and the MLI over the lower strut clevis. Okay, but I can do that as soon as uh, we get this one in. Copy, I think that's a good plan. Go ahead and hand start M24. Josh, we'll have you hold off until Frank gets his end started. Frank, let me know when you're ready for PGT. I'm going to work on that. I'm ready for settings. 
Alpha 2, clockwise 2. You'll be going two turns on M9 through M12. Alpha, you're breaking up. Say again on settings. Alpha 2, clockwise 2. Alpha 2, clockwise 2. Copy. That's four turns on mic 10. Copy, four turns on mic 10. We're just looking for two turns on each. Oh, I apologize. Um, I went four. Do you want me to back out two on that? Negative. Four is fine. Okay. Uh, how many do you want me to do on the rest? Let's do two turns on the rest, 9, 11, and 12. Copy. Good work. I need to get in for the right lower is installed and the MLI is in place. Copy, Josh. Thanks. Well, two turns on mic 11. Copy, two on 11, Frank. Two turns on mic 12. Copy, two on 12. Two turns on mic nine. Copy, two turns on nine. Josh, you can start on M24. You will be going to torque, so if you're ready for PGT settings, let me know. Frank, for you, no change to your PGT settings. Once Josh gets started, you'll be going three to eight and a half additional turns. Copy. All right, Josh. All right, M24 is hand started. One turn, I'm ready for PGT settings. Josh, PGT, Bravo 1, clockwise 2. You'll be going black line flush. Okay, Bravo 1, clockwise 2 to black line flush. Do you have an estimate on the number of turns? You'll be going 6 to 8 additional turns. 6 to 8 additional. Copy, thanks. Bravo 1, clockwise 2 is set. You know, on my 10, I got three additional, three and a half additional turns, green lights, three decimal eight torque. Copy, three decimal eight torque, three and a half turns, green light on M10. Seven and three quarters. On M24, green light, good torque at 11.8. Copy 11.8, seven and three quarters additional turns in green light on M24. And black line flush? Yeah, I'll eventually get that for you. Black line is flush, Lena, thanks. Awesome, that's a good bolt on M24. On you can stir your PGT. Go ahead, Frank. Sorry, on mic 11, um, I had between four and a half and five uh, turns, green lights, and three decimal, three decimal seven on the sword. Copy, three decimal seven, four and a half to five turns, green light. That's a good bolt on M11. Copy. Understand installing a rounding pit pin on the mid right strut. Copy, Josh. The block from the mid right strut. A firm. And then on mic 12, I have five and a half, oh, correction, five turns, green light. And hold on one second. Uh, 
four decimal zero on the turns. Copy. That's a good bolt on M12. Correction. On the torque. <laughs> Concur. Copy. Do it again. M12 is good. You can continue with M9. Copy. In work. Is installed. Copy, Josh. You can install the right upper strut MLI over M13 and M14. Copy. You know, I don't know that we did uh, up upper MLI. We did the mid strut MLI. Checking, Josh. Now five hours and 20 minutes into today's EVA. The duo is completing the installation for the right mid strut install. I just need two minutes, please. No problem. All right, Tina, that uh, right upper MLI is in place, and I'm trying to, and I think I can see, yeah, I don't know that we talked about the uh, left upper. Copy. If I missed that, I apologize, but we just, we just did the mid-left. Um, Copy. If you have eyes on, that would be great, and we are checking back through our procedures. And uh, M9 was five additional turns, green lights. It looks like three decimal six on the torque. Copy, three decimal six, five turns, green light on M9. Nina and I, and Frank, I'm 95% sure it is not on. Okay, copy, Josh, stand by one. Frank, for you, you can stow your PGT, release the RET from the mid-strut, and check the side pad grounding pit pin is in place. Copy this. Right. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Josh. That was just when I get the RET back, um, you know, if you'd like, I can roll back and take care of the uh, left side. I know we can't translate on the, on the mod kit just yet. Copy, Josh. Checking. Josh, for now, we're going to have you stick with Frank and finish the mid-strut work together on that one. Copy that. We'll work together on the mid-strut. Uh, the uh, pit pin is in on the side pad. Copy pit pin, Frank. 
And you can install the MLI over the side pad clevis. Josh, meanwhile, check that the mounting bracket upper surface is clear. Coming at you. Got it. Thank you. Okay. All right, I will get this pit pen installed, and then I'm going to get a, uh, a wire tie, do the same thing we did on the left. Copy that. Let me know. Uh, if you want me to hand you a wire tie, I could do that, too. Okay, thank you. Yep, no, I think it. Uh, I can get it. And Vito, the walking pit pen is, was in a good condition, and it is now in place with good pull test. Okay, copy. Locking pit pin is in place with a good pull test. And Josh, I'm not sure my call went up for you to check that the mounting bracket upper surface is clear. I did not hear that one, but I will. Vina, if you think I'm going to go back to the left side, that's probably a great time to check it. Stand by one, Josh. Okay, Josh, if you can roll the APFR without putting loads into the mod kit, we'll have you go ahead and roll to the left side to check out the left side. Okay, copy. Stan, take care of the strut on the right side first. Copy. Okay. Can you get that? No? Thanks. No problem. All right. Same deal. I think we tack it on M24, Zena. Correct me if I'm wrong. Sounds oh, good. And it's on now. A firm. Man. I can't reach is the Velcro. Are you able to hit the Velcro? Yeah. Um, let me grab this um air time and I'll Okay. I'll get in there with a the wire tight and join you. Copy, right, thanks. Anyhow, I worry about sticking me in the eye with this thing, but that's not going to happen. <laughs>
Okay, Zena, I'm going to roll to the left. Uh, I'm just going to keep my hand on the mounting bracket if that's okay, but I won't put loads into it. Copy. We're good with that plan. Just be gentle with the mounting bracket, and you're good to go. Oh, right, Zena, what's next for me? Again? Uh, what's the next step for me? For Frank, check that the MLI is covering the side pad clevis, and then we'll take a glove hap and gauntlet check from you. Okay. <clears throat> it is covering the side pad and clevis. I'm just going to wrap this a little better here. Okay, the mounting bracket is clear. Copy, Josh. All right, Gina, that is uh, covering the clubbus. That pippin's still in place. Uh, I don't know that I called it, but there was a good pull test on that pippin also. Copy all, Frank. Okay, if you've got the right mid MLI fully installed with wire ties, then we can have you translate to the cable bag and do an inventory. Copy that. Come on. If you're just joining us, Expedition 68 Flight Engineers Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio of NASA began a spacewalk at 8.14 a.m. Central Time to assemble a mounting bracket on the starboard side of the station's truss assembly in preparation for the installation of a pair of International Space Station rollout solar arrays on the space station. Casa, Cassida Designated extravehicular crew member one, EV-1, is wearing the suit with the red stripes. Rubio, designated extravehicular crew member two, or EV-2, is in an unmarked suit. The duo have completed multiple tasks on their list today, but due to some early on troubleshooting, are just about 50 minutes behind their scheduled timeline. Copy, Josh, and we would have been doing that after the collar bolts, so that's why we had not gotten to it yet. Turns out, now that we are all on the same page, if you can, translate to the WIFX handrail, and you'll be retrieving the silver PGT and the torque wrench. Okay, and then I'm taking that to Frank. A firm. Yep, we're just getting into cleanup steps from here on out. We'll also take a glove hap and gauntlet check from you, Josh. Okay. Thanks, Dana. I am right by the APFR. Do you want me to just grab that PGT and torque wrench? A firm. That's a good plan, Frank. Let's have you retrieve the silver PGT and torque wrench, and you can put that into the strut bag. Okay, while he does that, a uh, quick glove check. No deltas on the right. No deltas on the left. Half is dry. Gauntlets are still covered. We copy all, Josh. And if you can just tell us the status of the orange that you were seeing on the index and middle fingers. is gone. Sweet. That's great news, Josh.
And Josh, for you, if we could have you visually inspect the right mid MLI, we weren't sure if we saw a gap in the MLI. Stand by. Josh, yeah. Can you see my safety tether? I guess it got stuck behind me coming under the uh, um, the mass canister. Sure, give me one second. Okay. Frank, we're showing you clear of your safety sure. tether in our view. Okay, the reel is now bouncing in between your feet, but you are clear. Awesome. Thank you. Nice move. Currently seeing a live view of Frank Rubio as he takes inventory of his tool bag. Nice yard sale. Frank, big picture while you're over there, we'll have you eventually be inventorying the cable bag and stowing it. And if you can, also take a look at the strut bag, inventory the TBA bag if you've got eyes on it. Okay, and I am ready for inventorying the strut bag. We're ready for you, Frank. Okay. Um, Eva and Juliet, you have two small smalls, two small small reds, one small small red in series to a small large red. Copy. India is blank. Hotel is blank. Golf is blank. On 11, uh, ring 11, we have the silver PGT, uh, the camera, and the torque wrench. Uh, those are on a uh, Also in that bundle, I have four small, small reds and one adjustable. Copy all. Okay, then on Echo, two small, small reds. And that completes everything internally. Can I interrupt for one second? Yeah, go for it. You see in my, I'm looking at that right mid for you, Zeno. Was. I don't see.
see any gaps from this perspective. We copied Josh. We're looking especially for the inboard side of the right mid. Frank might have a better view of that from here. But, uh, give me one second. You want me to get back in the APFR? Stand by, Josh. I've got cooling set again at uh, four and a half. Yeah, Josh, let's have you go ahead and climb up on the APFR. You don't need to ingress, and you'll be taking a look at the inside of the right mid strut, so the side that's closest to the left strut. Okay, and if it is exposed, get in the APFR and uh, close it up. We think you'll probably have to translate around in order to access it, but let's see what we see. Five hours and 42 minutes into today's EVA or spacewalk, the duo are currently in cleanup procedures. Frank Rubio is doing an inventory check on the tool bag while Josh Cassida is checking the MLI or that multi-layered insulation around the mid strut that was just installed. Hey Josh, we are seeing a gap in the right mid strut MLI. Instead of having you translate all the way down and around out to where Frank was accessing it, we'll give you a go to translate on the mod kit very slowly, gently, and go access the MLI to get it covered. Okay, copy.
And Frank, for you, we'll have you start with a cable bag inventory next. Okay, copy that. And not sure if you've started uh, folding okay up the strip bag, finish. but we do need an inventory of the TBA bag. We were going to leave that for Josh. Okay, copy. Do you want me to just do that? It's right here. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Frank, yeah. Were you able to do a uh, wire? Oh, I see your wire tie. I got my answer. Thanks. On the on the right door. Yeah, I yep. see it. I see two on the left also. We did the uh, two sets there. All right, Georgina, on the TBA bag. Okay, I was going to call a large, small, adjustable, but that's actually on the strut bag. So it looks like that was the one thing external on the strut bag was a uh, large, small, adjustable. Copy, Frank. Is that going to the TBA bag? It is, it is on the handrail of the strut bag. Got it. Copy, Frank. You know, are you happy with the right mid now? Did I cut? I think I, I think the hole is here. I think we got it now. Checking, Josh. If you're able to see with your wrist mirror, that would be helpful. But definitely looking a lot better in our camera view. All right, Tina, on the uh, TBA bag, starting off with a uh, wrench that is taped that looks like a one inch wrench. That is uh, on a adjustable. That adjustable comes back to on the other end of that adjustable is the wedges. And there's another adjustable going back to the um, H fixture. Add. Copy and pause there, Frank. Josh, you're good with that right mid strut. You can go ahead and head back towards the strut bag. Copy that. Uh, towards the strut bag or back to the APFR Excuse with me. X? Back to the APFR with X. Copy. Frank, go ahead and continue. On the other side is an uh, adjustable. Uh, on the other side is an adjustable with uh, each. And having half a wrench, that is wide to another adjustable with a ratchet wrench on the other end and no socket. And it looks like that completes everything in the bag. Copy, Frank. That's a good inventory. Josh, for you, okay, we'll actually the... have you grab the strut bag, put it on the APFR, and then bring all of those back in together. Okay, Frank, we'll have you move on to the cable bag. Josh, you'll pick up where Frank left off putting the TBA bag back in the strut bag, folding that all up, and putting it on the APFR. Okay. So I have the third folded. So Alpha and Delta are, uh, straps are connected. One third of it is folded over. Josh, 
you came in pretty broken there, but okay. if you're able to just fold the strut bag over the TBA bag and get that nice and bundled to put on the APFR, we're happy with that. Okay, that was Frank talking me through folding up the bag, but you're saying just one more fold with the TBA bag in the middle, then put it on the APFR. Copy, I like that plan. That, is, that what you were, is that what you were suggesting? Exactly, yep. All right, Dina, I'm heading over to the uh, cable bag. Copy, Frank. You know, in the uh, top area of the cable bag, I have the two wire bundles, one Bravo right, one Bravo left. Copy, Frank. Uh, each of them have an adjustable, which are then connected to a third adjustable, which is connected to the bag. Copy. There's uh, nothing in the middle section. Copy. All right, and then on the uh, basement, we have a uh, jumper and a cat keeper, both on a adjustable, which is then on a ret. There's an empty small small. Sorry, that, that's a uh, small small rut. Uh, there's an empty small small rut. Copy. There's a square scoop and an on and an adjustable. There's the adjustable used to keep the basement closed. Hey Frank, I got to interrupt. I'm sorry. Go for it. Go for it. Where is the strip there? Yeah, it's over on the uh, forward outboard edge. Oh, I see it. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Have you released three of the uh, integral tethers? Four minutes. Got it. Those were the ones I had to bring over to All right, so uh, Zena continuing. Go ahead, Frank. I've got a uh, EVA connector insulating sleeve 1517. Got a uh, connector cleaning cleaner toolkit and a hammer, both on an adjustable, and that adjustable is on a small, small rep. Copy all, Frank.
We have a socket caddy with a wobble, six inch wobble on it, and a uh, crow foot. And that is also on an adjustable. Um, and it looks like on the other end of that adjustable is the. Um, and stand by, Frank, we've got a quick hand over here. Um, Frank, I'll take this opportunity. Uh, so it looks like bag is set. If you're just joining us, we're in a brief handover between satellites, but we're bringing you live coverage today of the ninth spacewalk of 2022 and the 254th spacewalk in support of International Space Station Assembly, Maintenance, and Upgrades. So far, NASA astronauts Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio have completed a list of tasks for their spacewalk today. That includes the 3A IROSA cable routing, the removal of the H fixture on the 1B mass canister, the upper triangle build and installation to the mass canister canister at the 1B power channel, and the left struts and right struts being installed onto the 1B mass canister. Due to the crew running about 50 minutes behind the timeline, the crew will not be doing the collar bolts or the 1B cable routing today. They are currently in cleanup, which includes the inventory of their cable bags, strut bag, as well as their tool bag. Okay, guys, back with you after that handover. Frank, I copied the cold foot and adjustable. Handover. Frank, I copied the cold foot and adjustable. Okay, copy that. And then on the other end of that adjustable is the uh, seven, seven inch socket that we would have used for the friction on the top bolt on the uh, cable bearing. And we have four long duration pressure. Is that two long durations, Frank? Disregard, we copy four. Uh, negative, it's uh, four. And I think that's everything. Uh, there was a lot in here, so let me know if I'm missing anything. Stand by, we're verifying. Frank, I think you're ahead of me on cleanup because I had to go back and I'm still wrestling with this. Uh, yeah, I'll come uh, over and help you out before I get this thing. That thing's, that thing's a monster. Yeah, I think especially with just the loose stuff right. in here. I almost wonder if it's worth putting that loose stuff in here because this holds it out so much better. You want me to bring it over and do that? Um, I don't know if they're gonna need to do another inventory after switching. I think we can just call it as we do it. Let's ask. Yeah, this stuff uh, just doesn't want to stay.
making some progress. Okay, I'll keep you posted. Copy. Really nice work. And yeah, I think, Frank, we can go ahead and have you help Josh. Four hands will be a lot easier for this task. Um, I may take this if, um, I think it's a lot better suited for putting some of those things in there. If we can, uh, and I have some empty rods, we might be able to transfer. Okay. I'll come a little bit more. Now six hours and one minute into today's spacewalk. Yeah, give me a sec. I'll just translate over. Yeah, that'd be great. Another important thing happening today. You currently see a dual screen box inside the white flight control room, where which is the Artemis control room here at the Johnson Space Center. We have the pre-launch flight control team on console being led by flight director Paul Kanya. In just about 15 minutes from now, the tanking for NASA Space Launch System rocket with the Orion spacecraft at Launch Pad 39B at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Currently seeing live views of the launch pad. In just about 15 minutes, we're going to split channels out at 2.30 p.m. Central Time, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time to enable KSC to begin broadcasting fueling coverage on the public channel while we stay and finish the EVA on the media channel. Again, NASA's Artemis 1 mission is the first integrated test of the agency's deep space exploration systems. The Orion spacecraft, SLS rocket, and the supporting ground systems. Launch of the uncrewed flight test is targeted for November 16th at 1.04 a.m. Eastern Time. might be a mess on top of the ADFR. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It'd probably also be a mess on top of your cable bag, wouldn't it? Um, we can try it. Let's just see how small of a ball we can make. I've got something I can wrap with right here. We could go around um, a couple times with this guy, or at least one time. Okay, got a point over there on that side. One here, there's one. Um, actually, if you can give me one over here, I can put it to this. Well, um, engine. But I might just pull it. Get this reattached for you. This is the one you put on earlier to hold it. Thanks,
and you're looking for another strategy. Yeah, something from that end to bring to this end. Okay. This is one that does that, but we need it. Um, let me see if I can find another one. That one's on. Oh, there's there's two. So I think you only released one of the three. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I kind of released two from this half, but maybe, maybe it was just that one. Yeah. So we got, uh, we could use one of them. Yep. To, one, I'll take it off to 2057. Oh, good. And then it'll only be tagged down here. Okay. On the corner of 2013. And then I can give it to you. It'll come right here. Right there. Yep. To you, does that work? Yep. All right, let me loosen it up. And if you think you can put this more conveniently on the cable bag, maybe that's the answer. Yeah, we can try it. Yeah, we all copy. Big picture for you both. We've got about an hour left on the day. Our plan is to put that strut bag on the APFR or the cable bag I think we'll take your judgment on when it is small enough and whichever place you want to stow it for translation back to the airlock. Okay. Uh, you know, if I can take them both, um, might just be the, the easiest uh, way to do it. Yeah, we definitely trust your judgment there. You want that D-ring instead? Yeah, sure. We just got to make sure we've got a good spot for a rat, and we do on the yeah. white tape there. I think we did it. Yeah. Wow. It's about thirds. <laughs> it's an ugly thirds, but it's thirds. No, look, that's all the metal, so yeah. okay. All right, so we are in good shape. Really nice work, guys. All right. Um, can I ask you a favor? Can I have you put this on? So I'll put it wherever you want it. On the far stanchion there? On the handrail? Yeah. Okay, let's make sure we're good on not crossing any tethers here. Right. You, you can let it go. Yeah, you're, you're going to have to go over first. Never mind. Yep. Uh, go for it. Once you, once you, uh... You want me to go to the APFR? Yeah. Give me one. My tether's still good, and it's on top. At least deconflicted with you. Clear. Thanks. If this pitch is so hard to move, uh, can we leave it in like pop up, pop up?
Yeah, Josh, we're good with that. Okay, so need anything in terms of reconfig here? Negative. That's fine, Josh. If you're just joining us, you're seeing live coverage right now of the 254th EVA or spacewalk for ISS assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. Down at the Kennedy Space Center, the launch director, Charlie Blackwell Thompson, just gave a go for cryo loading for the SLS rocket. They will take over control at the bottom of the hour, 2.30 p.m. Central Time, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time of the public channel, and the EBA will continue coverage on the media channel. This extender is at a position of one. The ingress aid is folded down to the boot plate, and we're in pop-up pop-up. Copy all, Josh. We're happy you can translate in that configuration. Copy that. I think you probably heard us talking. Uh, we'll get Frank headed in before I go. Yeah, we copy and concur. Frank will head in first, going all the way back to the airlock. And Josh, you can go ahead and follow him, remembering that you'll be picking up your green hook from 2008. Awesome. Thank you for the reminder. All right, so I'm ready to the width extender, and I've got a BRT on the width extender. The jaws are out. Sorry, the jaws are closed, the paddles are out. Copy. Now six hours and 13 minutes into today's EVA, Expedition 68 flight engineers Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio of NASA have just completed their cleanup task, are currently completing their cleanup task, and will be translating back to the airlock to finish out today's spacewalk. The duo began their spacewalk this morning at 8.14 a.m. Central Time to assemble a mounting bracket on the starboard side of the station's truss assembly in preparation for the installation of a pair of inter International Space Station rollout solar arrays on the space station. How's that going, Frank? Oh, I got one side for sure. One side of the stroke bag, cable bag. Oh, that's great. Be right over there to help. Thanks. currently in an orbital nighttime. The International Space Station and our spacewalkers are flying 258 statute miles above China. And again, we're looking for those spacewalkers, Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio, to start translating back to the airlock.
to the Xenoblade but, uh, again, I... Or headed at least to, uh, Xenoblade 2. Forward edge. Okay, Josh, coming in a little bit broken there. I've got you going toward the forward edge. Reminder, you'll be cleaning up your fair lead and then also the green hook. Copy both. Okay. So if you actually, do you see the um, one, uh, Integral that's holding it down. Uh, the strut bag? No. No, the cable bag. Um, uh, if you could release that, that would, that would be great. I'm happy to. Uh, do you mind if I pinch this? Uh, nope. I'm going to tack it down one more time, and then you'll be all set. And then go for it. Wouldn't take those. <laughs> Getting them through the uh, hatch is going to be fun. Oh, you think they're? I think we'll be okay because that stuff that's pretty viable. You agree? Yeah. Okay. I have not released your integral yet, but I will if you're ready for it. Uh, yeah, go for it. Put it my way. I right, went around here. It is free from structure, you read it to it. When you've got it in a good config for translation, let me know. I do? Okay. And just pushing it back. All right. Here we go? Yeah. All right, let's do this. All right, pick out my local. That wasn't very far. So what? Oh, oh. Yeah, right. My green hook is removed from 2008 and connected back to Red Reel. Copy, Josh. And Frank, you'll also be picking up your green hook from 2007.
And Josh, just confirming your fair lead is cleaned up as well. Uh, fair lead is unfair lead, and uh, my uh, fields are headed right back to uh, server. I'm sorry, port. Copy. I'm happy to hold your reel if that helps. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, let me do that. All right, I got it. Thank you. No problem. All right. You're in there? Yes, sir. All right, Frank's got his green hook, and we're headed back in. We copy. Sorry about my cutter right in your way, dude. No, it's all good. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just one, I'll hang out, give you some space to get around all that. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks. All right. No. See that last part again? I'm heading up, heading back. I do not want to follow Frank. Nope. I'm at uh Yeah, you guys got a lot going on there. That's four now. Yeah. So I'm at two thousand three and I'm headed uh station major. Copy and concur. Three. All right, thank you. Copy. Now I'm at a three. I'm sorry, I'm uh, past the search. And now it is three.
If you're just joining us, we're in live coverage of the 254th spacewalk for the International Space Station maintenance, assembly, and upgrades. Josh, let's have you stow the APFR on the CETA cart first. NASA astronauts Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio are currently in translation to the CETA cart where they will be installing the APFR or the articulating portable foot restraint as well as the the WIF extender. After the crew finish what's called the slingshot cleanup, they will head back to the airlock where we will conclude today's spacewalk. Today's spacewalk began at 8.14 a.m. Central Time to assemble a mounting bracket on the starboard side of the station's truss assembly in preparation for the installation of a pair of International Space Station rollout solar arrays on the space station. For you, we'll have that WIF X in WIF 1, clocking of 11. And then for the APFR, we'll configure it low profile. That'll be 6. And we already copy Papa Papa, Fox 6. OK, 6 Papa Papa, Fox 6. I'll get you that. And then clocking of 11 on the WIF extender. A firm, good copy, and a pitch of alpha for the WIF X. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to keep going here. Yeah, I went about 10 feet past the uh, spur. Copy, Frank. Six hours and 30 minutes into today's spacewalk, we currently see the crew as they translate. EV-1, Josh Cassida, 
is currently configuring the articulating portable foot restraint to a low profile near the CETA cart. Once complete, he will translate to the anchor hooks and once given the go by Frank Rubio, EV2, he will then unhook. He will then release Frank Rubio's anchor hook and he will translate to the airlock. And currently on your screen, we see EV2 Frank Rubio already translating to the airlock. Once given the OK, Josh Casto will release the anchor hook for Frank Rubio. Stand by, Frank. From Frank, you can open the hatch thermal cover and go ahead and attach your waist tether to the airlock earring extender. And that was Ground IV at NASA astronaut Zena Cartman giving the OK for Frank Rubio to ingress the airlock. Black on black, good twist Hi, uh, Josh, my right waist tether is. On the, gearing, on the airlock gearing extender gate closed hook lock black on black, and my small hook is on my right gearing extender gate closed hook lock black on black. We have a good look back. Thank you. Houston copies as well, and Josh, sure, we copy clocking of 11. And we got Alpha on the pitch. Copy Alpha. And we're staying on top of Papa. And Fox, six. we want it, right? Copy, Papa, Papa, Fox, six. And by on the Fox, I've got golf right now. Fox six is set. Kind of a weird angle, but it's over the boot plate. If that's what you want, it's over the TFR boot plate. Okay, copy all, Josh. Papa Papa Fox six sounds like good settings with a clocking of six. The goal is just to have that APFR just be really low profile. I'm sorry, you said clocking of six. Uh, the clocking of the APFR is still as we found it, which I think was 12. Yep, it's 12. Is that config? Checking, Josh. Okay. Okay, Josh, we'll have you go ahead and actually adjust that clocking, 180 off to clocking of six. 
Okay. A good pull twist test, pull twist test on the width extender. I'm going to take my red off of that and put it on the APFR. Copy, Josh. Good idea. Actually, I don't know that that clocking is going to work. It's going to be hitting the uh, the brake, uh, the dynamic brake here. Can you rotate it the other direction? It can rotate either left or right, clockwise or counterclockwise. I could get it pointed back into station if that's what you want. Hey, firm, that'd be great. Josh, we'll have you pause there for just a sec. Okay. Okay, Josh, we're thinking maybe you can just adjust the pitch on the width X to get this as low profile over the seated card as possible. Yeah, I can absolutely go more uh, station Zena. That's what you mean. Hey, firm, Josh. Okay, we're going to point it straight up. Okay, so for completeness, good full twist test on the APFR. Now adjusting the pitch on the width X. I can go past straight if you want it back in closer. Otherwise, I can just go straight up and down. Check. Currently, pitch is golf. We'll have you keep going, Josh, as low profile as you can possibly get it by adjusting the pitch here. Okay, I think that's what you initially intended. I think I gave you the wrong setting there. That's uh, alpha. And point it back in. Copy alpha. So if you're okay with it, I'm going to go back to our anchors. I understand we're complete here with the with X and the APFR, right? A firm. Okay, Josh, we're going to have you translate to the anchor hooks, clean up those anchor hooks, and then you'll be hitting the seat of brakes on your way back in. Hooks are directly nader of me. Can I hit the brake right now and just go nader and get the hooks? I'm in a great position to get the, the starboard brake. Tell you what, you guys talk about it. I just hit it twice, and I'm going to go work on some anchors. 
Copy, Josh. We're probably happy with that. Um, we may have you depress the inboard cedar brake pedals on your way back in after cleaning up. For sure. Yeah, happy to do that. Okay, sorry I'm at your uh, anchor. Okay, hey, awesome. Now you let me know if I've got this wrong. I'm going to drop a rat on his safety tether cable. I'm going to make a, uh, I'm going to connect him to my light waste tether. And I'll read you all the magic words. Currently in a loss of signal between, in between satellites. We'll have views back outside the International Space Station for you shortly. We just saw Josh Cassetta, EV-1, the astronaut in the suit with the red stripes, just configured the APFR, the articulating portable foot restraint, into a low prow profile and just headed to the anchor hooks where he would release for Frank Rubio and himself as he translates back to the airlock. And next steps will be, as you recall, releasing EV-2's anchor hook and attaching it to your waist tether with the gate closed hook locked. Okay, I've got a good load path by right the ring extender, a closed fighter lock, black on black, it's connected to Frank's anchor hook, gate closed fighter lock, back on black. I'm going to retrieve my rep, and then I'm going to go get my anchor from 3011. Copy, we're following along, concur. I'll get this port brake pedal. Nice. Copy, Josh. And I missed it. Did you release your anchor hook already from 3011? I did. It's on my mini workstation. Perfect. All right. That's a good config. I'm going to continue heading on board. He just had confirmation from Josh Cassida that both anchor hooks have been released. 
and he is now heading towards the airlock. I'll hit the Harvard Rick pedal if you wanted it, and then I'll go get the other port. Great pedal is depressed. Heading in. Copy, Josh. Hey, Frank. Yeah. Is there a chance your safety tether is locked? Looks like it's just floating out. They're not pulling me in. Yeah, it um it says unlocked, but it does not seem to be reeling you in that it's not as happy. Thanks. I'm going to continue in, Zena, with a good safety cutter. Copy. Nice work. I think I'm on the feet of spur. Copy. I see you. Looking good. Currently seeing HECA views or those HD camera views from Josh Cassidy's helmet cam as he translates back to the airlock. I hate to do this, but I'm right inside. Copy, Frank. As the astronauts enter the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, ingress begins the end of the spacewalk for the day. However, the spacewalk timer will continue to run until refresherization begins, at which point the clock will stop. Once the crew lock is completely repressurized, the astronauts on the other side of the Quest airlock will bring our spacewalkers from the crew lock portion of the airlock to the equipment lock and will help them doff their suits and the safers will be removed. Again, we're six hours and 49 minutes and 59 seconds into today's spacewalk, and we see EV-1, Josh Cassida, designated with the suit with the red stripes at the airlock, ready to ingress. All right, Frank, when you're ready for me, and Zena, if you're ready for it, I'll go ahead and start the ingress.
And Josh, as you're heading in, we'll have you close the hatch thermal cover as well and attach the hook to the magnetic plate earring. Hand over coming up in 15 seconds. Nice work, Josh. You see that thermal cover coming closed. Copy, Jimmy. Thanks. NASA astronauts Frank Rubio and Josh Castro both back inside the Quest airlock now in the crew lock portion as Josh is working to move his tether and to close the thermal cover. I don't, it's not obvious to me. It doesn't look like it's going to stay on if I go the flap right in front of me. Um, we're back with you after a hand over. Just come up, up to. Okay. Um, shoot. Okay, I'm back with you, Zena. And remind me where we're connecting this uh, strap on the thermal cover. Yeah, so once you've got the hook from the stowage tether point, attach the hook to the magnetic plate D ring. That's what I don't see. Oh, on the outside. Got it. I see it was just flipped down, flush with the airlock. Okay, we got it. And finish it down. Nice work. Yep, you'll cinch it until six lines are visible. And verify the magnet is engaged. Six 
signs are visible, the magnet is not staying. It's immediately pulled away. Josh, that's fine. Not surprising. With that, if you guys can both check your HECA LEDs are off, and then you can remove the SCU from its storage pouch and install. I believe my HECA is off onto my storage pouch. And my HECA is off, or LED is off. Copy, both LEDs are off. Once you've got your SCUs from the storage pouch, remove your DCM cover and connect the SCU. It works. It works for one. Thanks. Six hours and 57 minutes into today's spacewalk. Both crew members are back inside the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, and they have closed the thermal cover. Again, this is the beginning. This is the ending of the spacewalk. However, the spacewalk timer will, timer will continue to run until repressurization begins, at which point the clock will stop. Once the crew lock is completely repressurized, the astronauts on the other side of the Quest airlock will bring our spacewalkers from the crew lock portion of the airlock to the equipment lock and will help them doff their suits and the safers will be removed. Copy, Josh. Connected. Okay, copy for both of you. And if you are feeling a little bit warm, a TCD setting between 8 and max cold will minimize the time to get cooling on the SCU. With that, you can switch water to off. That's the forward position, expect water is off message. Copy that. Okay, I'm going to move my TCD first. I'm set on the TCV. Frank, when you're ready, we'll go water off. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Here comes water off. TCV log. And my water's off. Copy. Water's off for EV1 and EV2. All right. We will be waiting two minutes now with your EME water off. For now, you can verify that the outer hatch is clear of any hardware. Verify the hatch position per the hatch decal. So it is clear, and I can see the decal, but you don't want me to hit the hatch key, hatch key yet. Is that correct? A from Josh. Standing by. Got just over a minute to go. Thank you. 
10 more seconds. Okay, you can close and lock the hatch. Okay. And you know what is right below my feet up there? Yeah, it's uh, the bags. Unfortunately, I have them as far aft as, or as far uh, ports as I can get them. Can I give you a little more room there? Yeah. There's no way to get them on top of me, right? I'll keep working on it. Yeah, I'm going to bring them over to my side while you do that. Okay. Just that. You cover. Okay, that's just coming down. Drop it. All looks clear. All right, go on to latch. Not quite 360 degrees. We are in the locked position. All right, good stuff. Nice work, guys. Okay, if you can just check that your SEU is still connected to the DCM and water switch is still off. Two for EV1. Yep, connected off for EV2. Excellent. And just check for me that the hatch is fully closed and locked. No indicator, of course, but uh, we went almost 360 degrees and we're in the walk position with the tab. Perfect. On the UIA, check that oxygen for EMU 1 and 2 valves are both open. EMU 1 and 2 oxygen valves are open. Switch power for EV 1 and 2 to on. Power EV1 is on, good LED. Power EV2 is on, good LED. 
copy. Both LEDs are on and both powered on. Check that the power voltage for EV1 and 2 are between 18 and 19 volts. EV1, 18 decimal 6, EV2, 18 decimal 6. Copy both. On your DCM, switch power to SCU. Expect a warning tone. It worked for EV1. I'll let you know when I have it here. Here is SCU for EV1. And EV2, SCU. Copy both. With that, congratulations, and I will hand you back over to Duke. All right. So much, Cena. Great job, Zeus. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thanks to the whole team for dealing with a bunch of curveballs out there. You're amazing. All right. Thanks, Zena. Nice work. Josh and Frank, let's get you inside. We are picking up at the crew lock repress. On your DCM, take your O2 actuator to press. D1, in work. D2, in work. Okay, Josh, check that the EV hatch MPEV is closed. MPEV is closed. Okay, for the IV hatch equalization valve, I'm going to throttle that from off to norm. I'll go slow, and you let me know if I need to adjust. Copy that. Thanks, dude. Copy. And just a heads up, as we're coming down, when the crew lock gets to four, you can expect an alert tone, and our next actions will be at five. Copy. Yeah. Hold on, Duke. I'm getting a uh, O2 actuator fail or fault. Checking. Copy. I'm holding. Need me to read anything, let me know. Copy. Okay, for EV2, we see the O2 actuator is not in press yet, it is in between positions. Okay, copy that. Okay, and I have O2 position press. I think I had gone past the press. Apologies. Okay, we copy. Here comes the pressurization. Copy. Copy.
Okay, Josh and Frank, how's the rate? I'm about halfway between off and norm, so I can go faster or slower. Good for me. I'm not having any trouble. Yeah, no trouble for me. You can uh, uh, you can go faster for me if you want, but it's, I'm okay at this rate, too. Okay, I'll bump it up just a little bit. Sounds good. Thanks, Steve. And with repressurization having begun on our spacewalk clock for the day, the spacewalk clock for the day will now end. The spacewalk officially ended at 3.25 p.m. Central Time. The elapsed time for the spacewalk was 7 hours and 11 minutes. In the equipment lock portion of the airlock, you see Nicole Mann and JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata, who will help our spacewalkers doff their spacesuits once they bring them in from the other side of the hatch after refresh has come has concluded. After 7 hours and 11 minutes, today's spacewalk has ended. Let's look back at some of what was accomplished on the 254th spacewalk in support of station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. Expedition 68 flight engineers Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio of NASA began a spacewalk at 8.14 a.m. Central Time to assemble a mounting bracket on the starboard side of the station's truss assembly in preparation for the installation of a pair of International Space Station rollout solar arrays on the space station. Cassina designated extravehicular crew member one, EV-1, wore the suit with the red stripes, while Rubio, that's Frank Rubio, designated extravehicular crew member number two, EV-2, is wore the suit with the unmarked, wore the unmarked suit. The duo was able to complete most of its tasks today. And and expect an alert tone. We're going to wait two minutes for the pressure to stabilize. Copy. Copy. Again, the duo was able to complete most of their EVA tests for today, which included the 3A IROSA cable rerouting, cable routing, the removal of the H fixture on the 1B mass canister, the build out and installation of the upper triangle to the mass canister on the 1B power channel, as well the installation, as well as the installation of the left and right struts. What was left off for, for today's EVA was the collars and the IROSA cable routing. Both of these are not critical for the EVA or the installation for future IROSAs. They will be completed for the 1B. IROSA installation.
After completion of the right and left struts, the crew members translate it back to the airlock where they are currently in a repre currently in repress. Okay, the pressure is 255 millimeters. We're going to wait one more minute to make sure that doesn't change. Copy that. Copy. Okay, we're at 254.3, so that is a good leak check. We're moving on. Uh, both of you, please check that your glove heaters are off. Off for EV1. Off for EV2. Check your gloves for any contamination. No contamination visible for EV1. Not visible for EV2. Okay, for EV1 and 2, O2 actuator to IV. One. One IV. Now with the completion of today's spacewalk, we have some updated statistics for you. Today, the 254th spacewalk in support of the ISS assembly maintenance and upgrades. It was the ninth spacewalk of 2022. It was the first spacewalk of Expedition 68, the first of Josh Cassidy's career, tolling out to be 7 hours and 11 minutes for him, as well as the first spacewalk for Frank Rubio, tolling out for another 7 hours and 11 minutes. Total spacewalk time over. The total spacewalk time over the 254 spacewalks equals out to 1,609 hours and 48 minutes, which is the equivalent of 71 days, 0 hours and 48 minutes. If you want, I'm pretty doggone close. I could probably get it. Yeah, I don't know. Bye, right, just doesn't. Do you want me to? Please. Should we get this out of the way? Bring your T bar down just a little bit more. All right, I can't. Through your stuff here. Um, Again, you're looking. Thank you. 
Again, you're looking inside the Quest airlock, equipment lock portion of the airlock, where you see Nicole Mann, NASA astronaut, and JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata, who will help our spacewalkers doff their spacesuits once they bring them in from the other side of the hatch after repress has concluded. Now that you're pulled in IV, I'm going to take the IV hatch equalization valve to norm. You can expect an alert tone, and when the DPDT gets to about zero, you're going to get another tone, and then we'll start working on the hatch. Sounds great. Uh, copy.
Frank, I'm going to drop these uh, safety cutters just to make the egress easier, okay? Yep, yep. I picked up my uh, waste cover on. Okay, fellas, we're open in the hatch. Copy. Sounds great. Uh, for hatch. Go ahead, for hatch. So uh, one of the bags, it has a, uh, a wire tie that's wrapped in cloth, like it's an integral part of the bag. That is stuck between one of the roller hooks on the uh, crew lock side. Do you want us to deal with that now or get these guys out and then address it? The hatch is open, okay, but it just has this uh, bag stuck in one of the uh, hooks. Stand by. Yeah, Duke, thanks for the report. If you can get it clear, um, that would be better. Uh, let's do it now. Okay, copy. So, um, Koichi's just going to take the... Uh, Handle to unlatch, and then I'll be able to clear Direction to latch. Here's some copies. Okay, we have it clear and the hatch is back in a nominal config. Super, thanks. Why does Frank get to go first? <laughs> So let us know when you're complete with step four. Airlock Houston on uh, one, we'll take care of step four for the comm config, you guys can press.
Skyrock Houston on one. Uh, step four is complete. EV crew is no longer hot mic. Currently seeing views of Nicole Mann, NASA astronaut and suit up lead today with Koichi Wakata of JAXA helping Frank Rubio, that's EV2, that's donning the suit, the unmarked suit. He is currently being put onto, he's currently been moved into the equipment lock and now they're headed to grab a hold of Josh Cassida. The duo will then help the two spacewalkers doff their suits and take off their safers.
currently in a brief handover between satellites. We'll have views back inside the Quest airlock shortly for you. Again, we're waiting for the crew to doff their helmets after they have made their way back to the equipment lock section of the airlock, where we have suit up lead as astronaut Nicole Mann and JAX astronaut Koichi Wakata helping the crew doff their suits and take off their safers.
And we currently see Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata helping Frank Rubio out of his helmet. They have now moved over to Josh Cassida. And Josh Casta's helmet has been doffed. Expedition 68 flight engineers Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio of NASA concluded their spacewalk today at 4.25 p.m. Eastern Time after 7 hours and 11 minutes in preparation for upcoming solar array installation. Cassidy and Rubio completed the majority of their primary objectives today to assemble a mounting bracket on the starboard side of the station's truss assembly in preparation for the solar arrays installation of a pair of international ISS solar arrays, rollout solar arrays. The duo completed the routing of cables on the 3A power channel and began the installation process of a modification kit on the 1B power channel which will act as a scaffolding for the new solar arrays. The crew deferred some planned tasks associated with the completion of the modification kit, including the installation of collars and the routing of cables for the 1B power channel. The remaining work will be completed during a future spacewalk prior to the arrival of the solar arrays for the 1B power channel, and no changes are planned for the next two upcoming U.S. spacewalks. This was the 254th spacewalk in support of Station Space Station Assembly Upgrades and Maintenance and was the first spacewalk for both astronauts. Cassida and Rubio are in the midst of a planned six-month science mission living and working aboard the microgravity laboratory to advance scientific knowledge and demonstrate new technologies for future human and robotic ex exploration missions, including lunar missions through NASA's Artemis program. Speaking of the Artemis program, we're currently having the tanking of the SLS or the Space Launch rocket being shown on the public channel, the media channel, with today's conclusion of the EVA. We'll head back over to KSC to finish out, to finish showing the fueling as well. Coming up on Thursday, November 15th, will be the Russian EVA. The Russian EVA will start at 9 a.m. Central Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And now with the crew back inside safely from finishing their EVA, we'll wrap our coverage here. This is Mission Control Houston. of the space launch system and Orion and launch of uh, the Orion spacecraft tonight at 104 a.m. Eastern time from the east coast of Florida. 
We are headed to sunset, as you can see from this shot here, in roughly about 23 minutes. Got some cloud cover overhead as we count down.